last Wednesday of the month, so you know what time it is. It's time for you to go ahead and enter in into the man cave. Real quick, what play we gonna run? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> like a coach, though, man. <laughs> you just like a coach. But Deion Sanders is not making ninety-three million no, 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 dollars. No, no, no. You don't never dip your pen in the company ink. I'm glad you said pen. I thought that was going a different way. <laughs> <laughs> No, I didn't know what that was about to go. I, well, you can clip this. If I gave you 168 million, I want to know what type of fabric softener you're using <laughs> on your unmistakable. You know what I'm saying? If I mean, he could be described in three words, he's so horny at that moment. Um, <laughs> yeah, I said that. that that's going in the highlight section. I know it is. I know it is. You know, after that. Oh no! You know what I'm saying? You 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 just ahead because you know once we get on Patreon, we're gonna have that platinum tier for the platform sports talk. Show, you know what I'm saying? We need some platinum sponsors. That's what we need. You know what I'm saying? Miss hey. man. Knee alone. Friday. Knee alone. Fresh Prince. Knee alone. The, the best, best man. Knee alone. alone, man. Well, anyway, it was a good run while it lasted, so uh <laughs> then they were exactly who we thought they is. <laughs> and that's why we say we look at the guys that are that are in our OTE arena is who are you? You know Crazy story. The first time I touched a bat basketball court, I cried. I didn't I didn't want to go. They they forced me to go. They put me in the van. It's a it's a give back to allow the young people to experience the game. Uh, to learn, you know, the fundamentals the right way. All right, so it's the Man Cave coming to you live from the Platinum Sports Talk Network. My bad, Smooth. I won't mess it up no more. I got you, man. I got you. Um, on it's, Friday, it's, a, it's the Platinum Show, man. It's a platinum it, yeah, the show is Platinum. That's why I keep saying it. It's so
me reporting live kind of sort of but not for real but yeah it's Stanton. i'm your host for the evening your host for what you already know but if you don't know it's the last wednesday of the month so that means it's the man cave but i never host this by myself i got my brothers with me i'm gonna go ahead and bring them in first up the og because he was here before me y'all give it up for sadal what up, what up, what up? It's the real estate DJ coming at you, man. I almost said Sadal the Select. I was like, wait, no, 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 wrong avenue right here. It's just Sadal right now, even though he is Sadal the Selector and the investor. And he's he's Sadal. I'm the real estate DJ. The real estate DJ. The real estate man. DJ. The real estate DJ. Good to see you, brother. But we got more coming up next. Please show your love for T-Bone Funk. Hey, hey, What's hey, the words, everybody. Huh? Got my glasses now. I can see y'all. You, you y'all see now. Okay. All right, right there. Run. You, you ain't. Uh, gotcha. Yeah, because he was blind as a bat pre-show. But, Couldn't you know, see. it's all right. <laughs> you can see clearly now. The, the rain, rain is, is gone. gone. All right. So we're going to go ahead and bring in the final member of this here illustrious panel. Y'all give it up for the blackest man in radio and the blackest man on this podcast. Mr. Craig Black. I'm the blackest man on the podcast. I think me and me and Sadal kind of we running neck and neck with that a little bit, man. I don't know about that, man. What's up, fellas? <laughs> What's up? What up? Yeah. What's going on, man? You I'm all just a, I'm all smiles like right now. Feeling good. Y'all know why? Why y'all got to know why? Oh boy, uh, y'all got to know why. <laughs> Come on now, you got to know why already. Already, Craig. Them Commodores, them are going commandos, them clowns, whatever you want to call them. We 75, baby. We in the hunt. For, we know what right now. If we started the playoffs, we be in it. But I'm just I'm just saying, y'all go go right ahead. I mean, stand. look, go right ahead, I mean, stand. Look, that ain't the only team that be in the playoffs. Oh, my, oh, my mean, bad, T Bone. Your team in the playoffs, too, T Bone. I mean, you you talking about a team who's off <laughs> seven and Four, seven and four, right? Seven and four. Okay, hey, hey, you right there with me, uh, T Bone man. I, hey, man, it's good company, man. You're good company to keep, man. It's a couple now, other dudes on here that now, can't now say one, that. One, 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 <laughs> listen, you know, we ain't gonna talk. We ain't gonna talk about all that. We gonna move on. Hi, Craig. Hi, T Bone. Miss Williams is speaking. Y'all be quiet. Uh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> man, you know what? It's cool. Football woes happen to everybody. You know, we're yeah. we not going to act like <laughs> Craig I'm wasn't going through for the past 52 years. I've been years. living there for the last uh, year. Yeah, yeah. You know? Hey, Great. but I, you I, know I, what? Y'all, y'all miss something. Yeah, it's, it's, y'all it's y'all cool, miss though. something. Both of what our teams are seven, seven win teams. My team is at the top of the division. <laughs> Craig, uh, Craig, why, why? I'm sorry. I, I just happen to be in the best division in, in football right now. That's hey, my own but, excuse, but, man. But, but you know what? I'm going somewhere with that because, you know, like you pointed out, your team would be in the playoffs even at fourth place in the division. And here's where we link the chain together. You know who else is at fourth place in the division? Hmm? Huh? Hmm? <laughs> hey? Oh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> The camera just goes right to Stanton. I mean, it goes right to Stanton. I mean, my bad. It went to Sadal. I know who. Can I answer? Can I answer? Can I answer? Stanton? The the, the only team who on this panel has won the Super Bowl in the last five years. Oh, Uh, no. No, 10 years. Last 15. Oh, now it's 25. Oh. Last 30. 28. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, maybe 30 the last 28 years. years. Mm. Maybe. Mm. Maybe, you know. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We, we got why one did, team that can't value. Why, why do we going to bring up old stuff, man? I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. <laughs> I mean, what, yeah, bringing that, up old stuff. Now, now, one of y'all teams is going to the Super Bowl one yet. What so, have y'all talking about? Talking about you you may be in the playoffs. You may be this. You may be that. And this and that and the third. Hey, what you doing? Well, you know what? That's all right. Because you know what? Maybe there's some people out there who need to find out how they can watch this show so that they can see us out there. You know what I mean? Maybe some people need to find out where they can go if they want to, you know, like and subscribe to our show. So you know what they well, can do? Well, let them know. 
they can come and you know some of y'all watching right now platform sports talk show some of y'all may not know that we're on roku that's right y'all can watch us maybe y'all don't have time right now maybe y'all listening somewhere and y'all say you know what we want to see what these guys have to say. We want to see the look Sadal had on his face when we talked about the fourth place Rams out there. We want to be able to see. And you can go to Roku. We'll have the episode up after the show is over. And you know what? Hey, hey, some of y'all might not want to see. Maybe some of y'all out there are Rams fan and y'all don't want to see my faces. I'm happy talking about those San Francisco 49ers. So you you know what y'all can do? Y'all can go listen to us on Hot 365 Radio. That's right. It is always hot out there. You can listen to us on the radio, catch all these takes that's about to be given, because I know a lot about to be had. And, uh, you know, you can listen to us out there. But you know what? Going back real quick, YouTube, that's the main event. We got to go back to YouTube. We got to talk about YouTube. We got to talk about, you know, hey, we need them subscribers. And we need your comments, too. That's how YouTube knows People out there actually listening to us. They didn't just accidentally hit that button and find the show. They want to actually know that people engage with us. So when we talk, send us us a message. Y'all want to hate on my 49ers? Do it right now. I gladly welcome it. But anyway, hey, when y'all go and listening to us, make sure that you subscribe. And make sure that when you subscribe that you go ahead and hit that bell. That's right. That's right. Hit that bell. Because when we go live, you will be notified notified and that's right because you want to be notified because coming up is it is it next week fellas is it next week Uh oh, yeah, gonna... part, part one is coming up next week of the super show that's right we got the man cave and that's right normally it's ladies night but it's the super show coming up december 7th the man cave ladies night no we just not we're not just doing it once no 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 we're going to do it so – it's going to be so nice that we're going to do it twice because we're going to do it on December 28th as well. That's right. The Man Cave Ladies Night Platform Sports Talk Show Super Show is coming to you live. You got to check it out. You know, y'all ain't seen us together. Who knows what we got to say, but you're going to find out December 7th and the 28th. Check it out. It's like it's like brand invasions for wrestling. I'm excited. I'm very excited. The only time of the year. These... Like, what's crazy is I have had, like, I've, I've had those thoughts to myself. I was just going to text smooth, be like, send me the link for ladies. Now I'm about to, about to log on real quick. Be like, ha, take over, invasion. But I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. That ain't G. That ain't cool. That ain't gangster. That ain't, that ain't classy. But as you see, the opportunity has presented itself. So hey, December I think 7th. Bunny was calling you out. I think Bunny was calling you out a couple weeks ago, by the way. You know what? Bunny always calling me out. Bunny always got the smoke, but when I come around, the smoke seems to be gone. So, Bunny, what's up? I'm calling you out. December 28th, because I want to do it in person. It ain't real. It ain't face to face. I want to do it in person. I want to see you. Because what's up? Is this a battle of the brands? Because if we want to be real, if we want to be Real, all we got to do is check the stats. I ain't even going to say what the stats are. I'm just just, just check the stats. Ask Smooth to run you them stats. Ask Smooth to run you them stats. And we going to see who's top dog around her. HRR. So St. Louis. So, so deaf. STL to the day I die. Print up a we t-shirt. Print up the t-shirts right now. Worldwide. You know who else is worldwide? You know who else is worldwide, Uh, (laughs) T-Bone? I can't get it out. I can't get it out. I'm totally lost right now. I guess for the evening. I guess for the evening. Kirkwood High School soccer legend. The GOAT. I'm going to bring him on. He plays. Let me get the team name right because I don't need them coming for me. He plays for the Finn Hearts Football Club. Not football with your hands, football with your feet. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the greatest of all time. Freddie Adu, who? Show your love for Eric McWood. 
<laughs> Y'all ain't gonna clap. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Wait a minute. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, live studio audience. We're gonna try that one more time. Uh, the live studio audience was sleeping. Ladies and gentlemen, the Kirkwood, greatest of all time. The Finn Harps, greatest of all time. I'm calling it right now. Mr. Eric McWoods. Now you can come on up. For sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Put on his name. Appreciate the, uh, the intro, bro. <laughs> I, I thought the theme music was about to drop. You know what I mean? Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm, about to, I'm ready, man. Wow, that was that was that was serious right there. I like that. That in effect, Craig, put me on the radio. DC, I love you. I, I see, I see, man. And look, some support already out coming out there. You see that? Man, shout E-Mac. out to Maurice. Emac. Emac. Sir. Who is Maurice to? One of the goats. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's goat talk going yeah. on right now. One of the goats. Yeah, goat talk for sure. So, man, yeah. real real quick, I, I just gotta run this resume. In your four years at Kirkwood High, right? You were all conference. Not only that, you were all metro. Mm -hmm. Not only that, you were all region. Mm -hmm. Not only that, he was all state. It's funny. He was all state and they say you're in good hands, but he can't use his. Anyway, (laughs) not only was he all state, he was all American. Not only is he all American, he is the all time leading goal scorer at Kirkwood High School. He broke a 40 year school record, a record that stood for 40 years. 40 years. Broke it. He's got the most goals in the season with 40. He's got the most goals in the game at five. He's got the most goals in a career at Kirkwood High at 87. And. He was the Missouri Offensive Player of the Year. I'm going to stop right there. Tell us about your time at Kirkwood House. Man, crazy. He was a, Man, I see. He was a great four years, you know, obviously playing, being a three-sport athlete, you know, mm-hmm. basketball, soccer, or football in my terms now, but track and just, you know, going out there and playing and uh, being able to use guys' gifts. It was a hell of a time. And, you know, like I said, it's, it's you know, I, I really cherished it. You know, I'm really thankful to be there. So It's funny. That he says foot, he says soccer as I call it football. He yeah. calls it football now. When he came in, he asked Smooth. He was like, "Smooth, how long you been following football?" I was sitting there. I was like, "A long time, all, all, all his life." I think he played it at one point. I don't know, but then he was like, "No, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean soccer." <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, I felt I felt very uncultured." Uh, <laughs> football. Yeah, uh, fo- football. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's still soccer. No. Uh, okay. Anybody on the panel used to play soccer? Anybody? You know what was crazy? It's like in my time growing up in the in the boys' clubs, um, soccer was was a, one of the main sports. And it seems like over the years it evolved kind of out of I would say the black community. It's kind of crazy to me right now. That's but right, you know, but you know, because I mean I'm a lot probably a lot older than you, Emac man. You know, I'm over the hill. But anyway, you know, but it, it's just it's just like you know, it seems like they just like cycled soccer out of the black community, but now in my community, now that I live in, we, we have more of a, a, a Hispanic presence. In my high school, we went from being having like one of the best basketball teams here in DC to now we don't want like four or five state soccer championships. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. I mean, I mean football championships it's because you know it, uh, the makeup in our in our football in our in our regular football team, the football that you play with your hands, that football team. Is is total garbage right now. Well, it's always been garbage, but it's it's even worse than it was when I played back in the day. So it's just mm-hmm. just just the, the 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 sport. Just the how you how did you how did you get introduced to the sport? Would you, would you did you grow up in the in the sport like, or you just when you got in high school you started playing? How about that? No, no. To be honest, well, my pops he didn't let me uh, play football, like tackle okay. football, obviously. So mm-hmm. I had to figure out something to do and going to Kirkwood, and you know it was a predominantly white you know community, and then you know my mom mm-hmm. is uh she's a teacher out there, so. Uh, that's when I got into soccer, and I was playing with like many of my friends. And then when I was young, I think I was like five, six years old. I was like, "Oh, I can, I'm pretty decent at it." But my first love was basketball, so okay. basketball was always my first love. But then I figured out like I don't, you know, I'm not that tall. I'm about five nine. So and as I as I got older, I started really having a passion for soccer, and then that's when I kind of just started taking it seriously. And then yeah, next thing you know, I was playing college and not professionally. So it's uh, yeah, it's, it's like you said, it's kind of one of those things with the 
in the black community, it's not big. You know, we push more like basketball, track, mm -hmm. boxing, and things like that. And soccer is, in mm -hmm. America is kind of a sport you kind of have to pay to play. So you kind of, and, you know, and obviously being, you know, and in, in coming in the inner city and stuff like that, sometimes financially you can't always have that, which I think is I'm trying to change. I'm trying to make sure that we can get the black kids. We got the athletes. We got the, you know, the athleticism. And if we can take mm -hmm. our best our best athletes and put them in soccer, then we could really take a uh, to control of the game and stuff like that. So, like, true, could you true. imagine like the football tackle football stars we have now? If they had the footwork that comes with playing soccer, yeah, that'd be crazy. Mm -hmm. For sure, that for would sure, be crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just right, think about quick. the basketball. Think about basketball with that footwork today, because you know most of the best big men uh, that play in basketball right now started off in soccer. You get uh, Akeem the Dream, you get uh, Joel MD. You know they they yep. were playing basketball soccer first, and they got their footwork. You know, mm -hmm. same with Kobe. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, it's it's crazy. But, and you know what though, when we were in school, Normandy didn't have a men's soccer team. Towards the end, we got a girls soccer team mm -hmm. um you know we, they just started that like i think it was our senior year right yeah, yeah 2002 yeah so they, they got that senior year but you know i think that that's one of those things that's kind of actually turning around because i didn't really see much about soccer back then too but if you look now like every park around here in u city every park out here has soccer goals and you see soccer everywhere so, I mean, from your experience from when you would have been younger to now, do you see that kind of already changing to where you see it in more areas and starting to become more of a thing that is catching on more so than it did back in the day? Yeah, of course. Like, it's getting more popular uh, throughout the world, and I think it's really starting to get bigger in the United States. Because when I was younger, it really wasn't – it was big, but it wasn't like – because St. Louis is historically a soccer city, but in terms of, like – you know, having parks and recreation kind of stuff like that, it wasn't there. So I think nowadays you're getting kids because you don't I mean you don't always got to play basketball, football to be in the niche. Like most of my friends, they played. I was the only one out of my friends playing soccer. So for me, it was like like you said, it's we're getting more recreational parks where kids can play soccer, and I think it's great because, like I said, it's something that we can really get a hold of, you know, and do well with it. So. Hey, now Eric, uh, take us back. You know, um, want to um, learn a little bit about uh, you coming up in sports? Um, yeah. What were some of your uh, influences, uh, you know, whether it be uh, parents, coaches, adults? Uh, what were some of your influences go uh, growing up um, as you were coming up in soccer? Uh, I would say, obviously, my mom and my pops. Like, my mom is a track coach. Uh, and she's a big influence on me. So, uh, and my pops, just seeing how hard he worked, and that, he kind of instilled that work ethic in me at a young age. And then uh, my uncles, like I said, one of my uncles was on here, a uh, guy, and, you know, kind of seeing them. And watching them and see what they did, they really instilled a work ethic in me. And for me, that was like the most important thing because I'm always trying to work hard. I'm always trying to get better. So seeing that, you know, from them and then kind of like, you know, obviously watching, you know, pros, professionals uh, like Ronaldo, Messi and players like that, that really influenced me a lot. So I think that's like I would say probably most importantly my family. But in terms of like, you know, other aspects and things like that, I would probably say like, you know, the soccer players like Ronaldo and Messi. So. Mm. So when you say that name Ronaldo, I think I just saw a clip that um, mm -hmm. I think after the uh, the World Cup is that? Oh no, after he I'm not the World Cup. After his contract ends with, I don't know what team exactly he's playing with now, but he got an offer yeah, from Manchester United. Yeah, he, he got an offer from over in Saudi Arabia for like three hundred and sixty million dollars to play yeah, over yeah. there. It's yeah. like God damn. So yeah. so is is that? inspiration for you right now i mean you see that contract <laughs> yeah you see that of course, type of money man. flying around it's like damn yeah of course like i said when you see players like that getting paid i mean there's it's money in the sport so like obviously you know you don't want to always play for the money because there's passion and love for it but like you got opportunity mm -hmm. to make that much money support your family and of course like yeah that motivates me to, to go even harder and to work harder so yeah like obviously i got dreams and you know aspirations to to mm -hmm. make that type of money but you know it's just good motivation to have and you know it's something that, uh you know i'm working for so I hear you. I hear you. So uh, let me ask you about the league that you're in right now. Can, I, can we talk about that a little bit? Would you Would you playing yeah, right go ahead, now? Go ahead. What, yeah. what, uh, what, what help me out? Um, um, I'm new. I'm not a soccer expert. So break it down. Yeah. What level of the league that you're in, what level is it on right now compared to, I guess, the the Manchester United League? That Help, help me out. Yeah, it was a step below that, obviously, because, you know, England, I would say like England, France, Italy, and mm -hmm. and 
those are like the top. Those are countries where, you know, you got your Ronaldo's, your Messi's and stuff like that. But it's a stepping stone to it, which I would say. And like I said, it's Premier League. It's in Ireland because, you know, and, uh, and you go to Europe, you go Middle East, kind of places all over the world. They have a Premier League and they have leading leagues below it. So it's a Premier League in, a, uh, in Ireland. And, you know, Ireland is near England and, and places like that. So it's a step to get to those places. So for me, you know, it's obviously trying to do well as I can in, you know, in this league and to step up and to get to that level, you know, because that's obviously the dream that I have and it's something that I'm working for. So, you know. God willing, stay, you know, stay healthy and, and, you know, keep doing well, then, you know, that's the goal to get there, you know. And I hope I'm not the only brother in this panel that's kind of ignorant when it comes to the leagues and, and hey, soccer. Hey. Am, I yeah. not, am I not? I hope I'm not the only one putting myself out there right now. <laughs> I got I'm on there. Now. You're not alone there. there. You, you are not alone. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. We're getting all getting education. All right. Yeah. I was going to ask, so, right. so for like for me, I, it just hasn't been something that I've been able, you know, there's only so many hours in the day. Like, <laughs> I yeah. can only keep up with so many things at a given time. That doesn't mean that I don't want to. So for someone like me, um, you know, what what would you recommend as far as, like, the entry points? So not even just me, but, like, we may have some younger viewers out there who, you know, yeah. may have heard about soccer, but they don't know what the entry point is to watch, right? Like, you know, you could, you could turn on an NBA game in the middle of the season and you know, it's the middle of the season. Like, what's the entry point for people to start? Like, when if they want to start watching, like, what's the best stuff for them to watch? Man, that's a good question. Entry point, I would say try to watch as much as you can because in terms of, like, the plan, obviously soccer is, you know, you're 90 minutes, uh, 11 v. 11, you know, and you got, you know, it's a lot of running, a lot of technical you know, a lot of dribbling, a lot of it's. I mean, there's so many values and like aspects to the game. But entry point, I would say, just go ahead. If you like right now, watch the World Cup. Just watch how watch how players play, and because that's the highest level there is. And I feel like if you can watch that and you can get a feel for it, because you know, I got sometimes people call me, hey, this and that. If you can kind of just watch the game and kind of get a feel for it, then I think that's the best way. Because the world, this is the only time I think in every four years where like the World Cup is going to be on Fox Two. Fox Sports One, so it's on. It's on national television. Other times, you know, a lot of games are coming on. You know, a lot of not your local channels. So I would say just watch yeah, the World TV Cup TV. and watch as many games as possible. So, so yeah. All right, cool. You're talking about the time. That's my first question. Mm -hmm. You said it's 90 minutes, but it really isn't. Because when, <laughs> when when the 45 minutes go right, yeah. What what is this extra time? Who determines how much the extra time is? Mm -hmm. And and. Ah, yeah, who determines yeah. that? Like, and <laughs> it's, what's the purpose? For yeah, it? it's well, obviously, it's the ref. You know, the ref is the one because I know we talked earlier about you say, you know, soccer players, we'd be extra dramatic going down, you know, so injuries no, and stuff smooth, like that. Smooth said that. Well, smooth, that. Smooth said I, that. I co signed it. You co signed it. Yeah, yeah, thought. yeah. So, <laughs> but yeah, like I said, you have obviously there's injury. So, like, after 45 minutes, it's just the first half, players get injured maybe around the 20th minute mark, things like that. And that's mm -hmm. when they'll add on time and add on time. And then, you know, maybe if there's delays or something like that in the game, it's really just kind of co a collaboration of the time from when players get injured, if things happen during the game, maybe VAR, which is like mm -hmm. the technology and stuff like that, and they go up and that's when they add the extra time. So it could be up to, like you've seen some games been 10 minutes extra time, stuff like yeah. that. So it's, Okay, mm -hmm. okay. If okay. that makes sense, yeah, try to like summarize it a little bit for kinda you. Kind of, so. sort of, not for real, yeah. but I'm going to make it work. Yeah. Real quick, uh, <laughs> your uncle said, he see your nephew, uh, yeah. former guest on the show. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. What's up, uncle? <laughs> yeah. All right. Hey, a any, question. Any, you know, I want to, I wanted to oh, kind of go yeah. back and uh, kind of talk about. We, we kind of uh, touched on uh, your your experiences in high school. Um, tell mm -hmm. us about your, um, you know, collegiate level. You know, and how yeah. how that how how that was, and you know, um, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So my, I was coming from high school. I had an option to, to actually go to England out of high school. But uh, I turned it down because, you know, put the emphasis on the education, which is kind of hindsight. Like, I, I kind of wish I did it. But then at the end of the day, I got an education, and that was important. So when I went to college, I went to Xavier. And then after two years, I went to uh, Kansas City, which is Division One University. And college is a lot different than, I would say, when you play overseas. Because, like, most guys 16, 17, they're playing full-time soccer. Whereas in college, you know, I'm going to class, and then I got to go practice. And there's so many aspects. So you really kind of only – training maybe once a day whereas like with you if you go overseas these guys are training every single day so it kind of puts like i said kind of the u.s a step behind in terms of soccer because we're not we're not getting that training every single day we have to go to class we got to do many things but like i said college is a good experience the level is good and it's it's a good stepping stone you know to get to the next level to play pro but i in hindsight i would say it's 
it's kind of one of those things that's like you really have to kind of decipher if you if to go or not to go because if you have dreams of playing professionally then it's kind of one of those things that maybe you know you shouldn't do I'm not saying you ain't got to do no education or like that but i think it's important that you you know you decide because it's said this that's why we're kind of a step behind with soccer in the u.s a little bit so absolutely yeah You're saying that talking about the education part of it it seems like every sport is like that overseas in in, in different countries it's like their sport is like a, a straight up job for them. And, yeah. you know, with the U.S., I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I think you, what the U.S. does is great, you know, the education mm-hmm. part of it. Not knocking that. But that's why a lot of, um, I think that's why the world caught up in basketball with us because of the, yeah. the work ethic, because they, they add it 24-7. At a younger age, they're playing with grown men. And it's just, and I think we do have a, a harder uh, way to go to catch up to the world with soccer right now. So yeah, speaking on that, talking about that right now, let's talk about a little bit about the World Cup. You you brought okay. it up. So what is what is your perception of the USA team USA right now in the World Cup? I mean, give me your, your breakdown. I know we beat is it Iran or Iran? Iran. I don't know. I almost pronounced it the wrong way. But anyway, <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> but um, but um, we we actually we beat them and we, you know, we're on to the round of 16 right now. What's your perception of the team? Mm-hmm. How far can we actually really go right now? Uh, like I said, this is a huge step for the U.S. Because in terms of just how far we've come, and like the, you can say, the last even ten years is crazy. Like, and I love it because we got a lot of young players. We got most of our players are playing over in Europe, and then you know they're doing well, which is important because that's what we need, and it shows that we can play at a high level with the rest of the world. And I really think, like I said, Netherlands. We're playing Netherlands on Saturday, and I really think it's a winnable game. To be honest, like I said, Netherlands out of all the top nations is one of the. They're, they're one of the top nations, but I think it's a very winnable game for us. And I feel like with the players we have, I feel like we can make a run. I mean, it's not going to be easy because, you know, Netherlands got players playing in some of the top divisions. They got some of the best players in the world. But at the end of the day, I really think that we have a chance, you know. And I think if we go out there and we play and we can maybe try to push the game to penalty kicks or just try to get something out of the game, I think is important. Because I think anyway, us making a round of 16 is a good accomplishment for America. So, you know, I'm excited for the boys and I'm, I hope we can get it done. So. Boom, just formulated another question. Also, I just want to shout out uh, Ms. Williams, who apparently just knew this soccer information off the jump. You see, when we asked, she was quick to say, no, it's it's to allow the players to get the full 90 minutes. I'm like, you knew this whole time as well? <laughs> Man. Yeah. Okay, but another question uh, with the within the game. Can you explain what separates or what determines whether you get a penalty kick or a free kick? Penalty kick is in the box, so you know – like I was saying, like the big square in yeah. front of the goal, that's anything in the box if you get fouled as a penalty kick. Okay. So it could be contact, it could be a handball, it could be, you know, those are probably the two main things. But, like, anything in there is a penalty kick. And then anything outside the box is a free kick. So, okay. and you got indirect kicks, you got direct free kicks, and then obviously the ball goes out on the end line, that's a corner kick. So, kind of, you know, you watch the game a little bit, so you get a feel for it. So. I understood all of that. Yeah. I understood all understood of that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, why, so, why, why don't I believe him right now? But go ahead. No, no, no. I'm just saying, if you're in the box right yeah. there, to go, you get a penalty kick. However, if you are outside of that box, free kick. it qualifies as a free kick. Yep, now, yep. they have the direct free kick where everybody strikes those poses and stuff. Or what, <laughs> I, I call them striking poses. Yeah. They might be protecting things. I don't know. Got to protect them. Got to protect them. Yeah, got to protect them for sure. Yeah. Isn't that another that's you gotta protect see, yeah yeah see but it's see. A, it's a catch-22 because if <laughs> your hand touch it it's another problem but if your hand don't touch it you getting hit in places right now if it goes out on the on the end line right yeah that's the that's the that's line the, uh, in between the outer line and the sides of the goal right yep right where the goal Bow, is yeah what's up i knew it he didn't even say that <laughs> yeah. i knew that so if it goes out there, then then that's the other kick. That's what yeah. that is. Corner yeah. kick, yeah, corner, corner kick. kick. Yeah. That's so, the one. Set pieces, yeah, for sure. So. I knew what was going on, Craig. Yeah, you gonna so put some respect. I, I, I hear you. I, I'm giving it up for you. You ran it down. All right, all right. Move, move. I had to paraphrase it a little bit, but yeah. I got the point out. A win is a win. Okay. So uh, former guest and your uncle, God Tori said, how did soccer help your basketball game? And mm-hmm. vice versa, how did basketball help your soccer game? That's a good question. Uh, it's a good question. Uh, uh, soccer helped a lot in terms of my uh, basketball because I was helped with stamina, but also helped with footwork. And like I said, my when I was younger playing AAU, you know, uh, traveling across, uh, I always – people talk about my defense. And I really feel being able to switch your feet, being able to, you know, to, to – 
guard maybe quicker players or, or faster players it was important for me so I said that's what I said it, my footwork like I said made, made my footwork a1 and you know I'm extremely blessed and uh you know it's something that I, I I encourage a lot of basketball players to do for sure and then uh did did your soccer game help your basketball no the other way did your basketball help your soccer in any way yeah I would I would say because I was a point guard yeah okay. so um for me my vision on the pitch so like whenever Phil Say pitch, yeah, field. So my vision on the field was to be able to like to pick out players and kind of stuff like that, and be able to kind of read defenses. So I say soccer and basketball kind of correlate and go hand in hand sometimes. Like I said, it, they really kind of just feed off each other. So you know, that's one of the things you could say right there. So, and then we have Eddie McMarvelous says, "I see E Mac <laughs> McWoods Dallas Division have you on the big screen." <laughs> oh, yeah, shout out, shout out, Unc for sure. <laughs> Man, he just made the family sound like a nationwide corporation. Yeah, the Dallas <laughs> division of the McWoods. Yes. We got you on the big screen. For sure, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, uh, you said that you played basketball. You know, yeah. S- Smooth also played basketball. And mm-hmm. you said on the defensive side, I can't speak for Smooth, but I can speak for myself. Yeah. You know, uh, during my time in the Jewish League at the Jewish Community <laughs> Center, it's a, hey, it's a real thing now because Larry Hughes verified it off the show. So y'all can go on somewhere. That's real now. His family in the Jewish League. So that's yup. Yeah. So that's legit. That's real. You want to laugh all you want, Craig. I was a defense machine. Y'all, up, you don't even want to show. see me because I couldn't score. Offense wasn't my thing. So I had to get like up. I'm good. I, I on thought me. I was going to have to give my uh, Dave Chappelle opening statement for a Saturday Night Live. <laughs> give you some time. I didn't know, know where you was going with that Jew. Man, I, was like, what? I was scared. <laughs> I was my, like, my what? The beat. I thought I thought that whole stream was going to shut no, down. I, Let me read. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I am not <laughs> anti-Semitic, okay? I'm not. I have no <laughs> I love all my Jewish friends, okay? The so. views of Stanton do not reflect <laughs> Are not the views of the platform sports talk show or its affiliates. Uh, we had a good question from the uh, one of the uh, we did, yeah, from from former guest Roberta Mick Woods. He got all the guests on here now. Oh, that's duh. Now, that, yeah. that's not not for those who don't know. Can you please explain who Miss Roberta is to you? The goat, like you said, we doing ghosts today, so it's goat talk, goat talk, <laughs> yeah. okay. Yeah, one of the goats, just <clears throat> one of my biggest influence, you know, just in terms of me being a man and just just everything. Like I can't explain. I mean, just just everything she's done for me. Like I said, I wouldn't be here without her, you know, to be honest. Like it's just it's one of those things. Like I had a real close relationship. Even when I'm overseas, I'm talking to my mom every day and and she making sure I'm straight. And uh, you know, I'm just I'm just proud of her. And I'm proud of what she's done too. So yeah, so for so <laughs> it's funny. You said without her, I wouldn't be here. Like, yeah, li- literally. Yeah, literally. If we, if we could, yeah, if we could so. bring her question back up, I didn't get a chance to see it. I think I don't. I, don't, I thought I saw yeah, it. So. I didn't want to paraphrase. Uh, if you could speak about the mental aspects of soccer. Yeah, mental aspect. I mean, it's definitely a sport. You know, I know when I was younger, they used to be like, oh, they used to call us like fairies and stuff like that because we over acting dramatic and extra stuff like that. But like in terms of like the mental aspect of the game is like you got to be very mentally strong, especially like if you're playing overseas as an American, because, like, obviously I've dealt with a lot of racism from fans and, and everything like that. So you really got to be mentally strong because you want to just sometimes just lash out and just, you know, obviously act a certain way, yeah. but you can't – there's a narrative, you know, you don't want to be that angry black man. So you got to really just kind of take a step back. You kind of just kind of just let it be. And then, you know, in terms of just mental preparing yourself, because it's 90 minutes and it's 90 minutes, but you only had the ball for three minutes, if that makes sense, like as a player. So 87 minutes is really just thinking. And think about where to be in the right place and touching the ball. So, like in terms of like just playing, it's always thinking, always being ahead and trying to just be mentally sharp. Because, like I said, it's it's overseas is dogs. Like you said, you you one bad game is you know your spot might be gone. So it's just terms you got to be super mentally strong and be ready to go when you're playing out there. So, so do you think you got most of your um, I guess the the racist remarks came from overseas or they came from some from the states? Oh, uh, I would say overseas for sure because like. And, you know, in the States, it's kind of like, I would say it's, I wouldn't say it's hidden, but it's more so when, like, the fans, when you play overseas, are super passionate. Like, you know, when I was playing in Hungary, you know, you're going to have monkey chants. 
you know, it's it's gonna be crazy stuff. You might get an inbox on Instagram calling you the N word, like all type of stuff. You would play a bad game, you know. If you lose a game, you can't go out in public. So it's like every area has its own kind of the countries that I played in has their own niche of like the fans. And obviously, like I said, every country ain't racist, but like I said, these are passionate fans, and you know, you gotta be mentally strong because they, you know, they'll let you have it, you know. And more so in the states, it's kind of one of those things that's kind of. I guess growing up, you kind of you know about racism. You know what it is to be a black man and and how to deal with certain situations. So you really, I would say it's more culture. But some countries aren't culture, so you really got to be able to deal with you know mm. they're they're close minded and and what they do. So yeah. Hey, hey Emac, man, I'm not. Uh, I hear what you're saying about the, the passion part. I'm mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm not gonna call that passion. I'm gonna call that ignorance, man. Because I'm yeah. I'm real passionate about my sports, man. I I love. I love my football and basketball, man. But it's like, I hear what you're saying. I watch some soccer matches. You see documentaries on it on uh, Real Sports yeah. did some stuff on it about which I have to go through. And just to hear you say it, man, it's kind of, man, I feel for you, my brother, man. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. I just, I just can't. I, you better than me, yeah. man, because I guess I wouldn't have been in the league. I guess I wasn't meant to play soccer, nothing like that. My, my <laughs> fat ass, one of them. I couldn't do it any damn way. But, ne- but nevertheless, man, that you, that's, that's real, man. That racism stuff, it's just yeah. it, it irks my soul. How about that, sir? I'll just leave it yeah, there. And I won't say crazy. no more about it. Mm-hmm. I, I, I know how so, so I, when I was in high school, I was on the wrestling team, and you know, that was indoor winter, you know, not much to it except in you know what you do on the mat. One thing I do admire about soccer, and it's something that that's just it's just not in me to do. How do you prepare for the 90 minutes of constant movement, constant running, constant, you know, moving up and down that the, the I don't want to say the wrong thing. It's not the field, it's the pitch. Is that right? Pitch, yeah. Pitch, yeah. You got it. Yep. So, yeah. I, you know, how do you, how do you prepare for that? Because that's 90 minutes. Like, I, I'm going to tell you right now, I couldn't get past doing two miles of running, at the, which I had to do one time. And that was that was the end of that. So. How do you how do you prepare for that constant movement that you have to do for ninety minutes? That's that's because fitness is is everything. So I would say just from a basic aspect, fitness is everything because soccer is seventy percent fitness. So if you ain't fit, you won't be able to last. But on the other side of things, it's a matter of when to run and uh, like kind of we talked about the mental aspect because it's of when to run and when to not run. Because if you just go out there, you sprint a hundred miles per hour, you're just gonna tire yourself out after 20 minutes. So I would say you got to really know when to time your runs, when to make the runs, when to press. Pressing is maybe, you know, running at a defender and keeping them one way, cutting off passing lanes. You know, you can do the little things to kind of prepare yourself so you can last the 90. Because usually around that 70, 75-minute mark, that's when you're going to get heavy legs, and it's a lot of sprints. But every position has different, you know, different types of running. Like for me, I'm an attacking player. So me, my game is sprinting. So I'm, I'll do more sprints than – most defenders are midfielders. So for me, it's more so trying to make sure I'm dangerous, saving myself to be 100% when I'm making sprints and trying to just be dangerous. So, yeah. All right. So I have a question. We, we are going to educate the masses on soccer today. Uh, if you could explain the, 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 the positions. Okay. Because I heard your name soon. And, mm-hmm. you know, obviously everybody knows goal. Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> but it, it's it's the other ones. Explain mm-hmm. the defenders and midfield and the attackers, all that. I don't even know if some of those are real positions. Yeah. But if you could just explain the positions in, in soccer football. Yeah, football. <laughs> so, you know, obviously you said the goalie. That's the one man in front of the goal. Then you got, you know, your defenders. So you got your right back, your right defender. Same basic terms because I can say full back. But then you got your right center back. Left center back, then you got your left back. So you people line up in four or three because obviously you can play a different formation like four three three because it's you know yeah. eleven men for each team, and then you got your midfielders, uh, which is you got defensive midfielders. Sometimes they play. We call them a number six, and then you got you know your your, your central midfielders number eight, and then you can maybe have attacking midfielder, which is like your number ten, which is like your uh, your Messi, your your player with flair. You know who Neymar is? Mm-hmm. Yeah, your Neymar. Yeah, and then you um, and then you can have you know you got your strikers forwards all the type of stuff so then you got you know your left wing <laughs> your uh your striker and then your right wing so yeah i'm sorry i'm sorry your uncle cutting up <laughs> Grant <laughs> <Robinson. laughs> i know you're gonna be here cutting up <laughs> craig wouldn't have been jack wouldn't have been jack <laughs> <laughs> Hey, guy, no, guy. I would not have, guy. I would have been the Louis Farrakhan of soccer. That's what I would have been. 
<laughs> Not on the Peloton, no. <laughs> no. We uh, cut up right now. <laughs> man, you know what? I'm going to shut up. I'm going to be quiet. <laughs> I just said I was gonna get a bike, and I said, you know what? I'm not getting the Peloton because I know I already know I'm not making that investment because my time ain't it ain't gonna be that long on that bike. So yeah, you're right. It ain't lasting on the Peloton. <laughs> Peloton gonna be a new Pella rack, okay? <laughs> Hanging some clothes on that. <laughs> Too much money to be uh, wasting. Mm-mm. Man. Shout out to everybody that has a Peloton. I I I, I commend you all. I applaud you. They rich. Well, man, so. what, well, talk, can, I, can I ask another question? Can I ask another question? Yeah, um, well, since you were breaking down some education about soccer, can yeah. um, I need to know about the penalties, the different okay. cards. Help me out. The yellow card, yeah. and, it's, and it's a red card. Is a red card too? Yeah, red card. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, mm-hmm. so what, what? What is? Help me out. I, I I don't know. I don't know. Just could you break it down for the for for us ignorant people? So, <laughs> yellow card is just telling me just caution. So. Say if I, you know, go up to maybe somebody and I'll just foul them real hard, but it's it's not it's not really, I would say, that aggressive, they'll give me a yellow card. So right there, that's a caution. But if I get another yellow card, two yellows equal a red. And a straight red card is like if I go in there and just punch somebody in the face. It's real, it's really uh violent behavior, for instance. But there's so many okay. aspects you can say you can get a yellow card for a handball. It's I mean the game is changing so much now, but like in basic terms, two yellows equal a red and a yellow is a caution. So yeah. Okay. So, gotcha. so the car is kind of like how the NBA does flagrants, like, you know, two flagrant ones. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, you can say that, like yeah. That, and then a straight flagrant two is just, mm-hmm. okay, okay. Yeah, so All right. and the injections, yeah, so stuff like that. Red car, you can get suspended for, you know, one game, maybe three games, depending on how violent it is and stuff like that. So. All right. Mm-hmm. All right, Anybody cool. got questions? I got another question. You want? I can keep asking questions all day about soccer now, man. Hey, um, <laughs> so, so what, what, is, what is your season like? Talk. Okay, hold that thought. Hold my thought. Oh, me stop. Hold I'll that stop. thought, Greg. I'll stop. I'll hold stop. that okay. thought. I got a surprise for us, fellas. Uh oh. We got a surprise here. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce here on the man cave the legend himself. Fellas, y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all don't Uh-oh. even know what's about Uh-oh. to happen. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. please show your love for the one and only Joe. Tori, <laughs> what's up, Joe? Oh, hello, what's up, guys. Right. What's, what's up, good? What's up? I can sing. Joe, what's the minute, man? Right? Baby, yeah. what's up, hey, what's up? What's up? Can you hear me? Can y'all hear me good? Oh yeah, yes, uh, yeah, yeah. We got you. We got you. Right on, right on, right on, man. Right on, right on. Eat back, man. What's up with you, man? Proud of you. What's know up, that. Bro? Yes, tell, sir. Tell yes, sir. You, hey, tell him where you really got all that talent from, son. The man, you already know the man right here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know you gave little guy Teezy a shout out, little, little shout out, and your mama gets a big <laughs> shout out. Your big dad, your big head daddy, he get a big head <laughs> shout out. But, <laughs> but you know, you know, you know, he, all them skills, all them skills, and you know what I'm saying? He's a Libra, so you know, there's Libras. Temperament out, take a out, whole out. lot to handle. Take a whole lot of person to handle all them type of gifts and um. I'm glad y'all got my man on. Glad y'all in St. Louis uh, showing some flowers to, you know, somebody for real who did it education-wise, did it skill-wise, did it, made it out the hood from, from the Academy Courts, you know what I'm saying, in case y'all don't know. Y'all know about the Academy Courts down there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Eric come from real, real, real good people. His mom and daddy and all, and they made it up, man. So it's, it is, a, I say, a, a history of just uh, the McWoods and the Tories. How God happened to put us together, and uh, both families just, you know, have been uh, blessed um, beyond, um, you know, uh, the imagination of what we ever thought. I, I want to go back to a uh, testament to that. I believe God just left a comment. If we can pull that back up, on it says he's serious about his training. Took him out to L.A. We got yeah. back at three a.m. I went to bed, and he went to the gym and worked out. That that is that's <laughs> mama that. mentality. That's the best <laughs> that's yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, running. That was, that was crazy. Yeah, running Definitely going cold. out to LA. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You remember that? You remember that, Uncle Joe? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Running out to LA, yeah. Beach. Get you gotta get. Yep. I mean, soccer is you know. I mean, that's 90 percent of it is running. If you ain't got, you don't have those wheels. You don't have that energy. I mean, I tried it back in the day, and I have some. You know, I have energy, but I ain't got that much energy. I'm saying you can forget that. You know, what I'm saying I'm like, come on, man, that's a little bit too uh, much running for me. That's some running. Yeah. That's some running. 
And he yeah. come from he come from a running, you know, my sister ran track. So he, you know, he gets it naturally. His sister, his sister ran, my sister ran, but I'm talking about, but when it comes to like conditioning, and you guys were talking about that earlier. I mean, I mean, you really have to mentally be prepared to take yourself there, even when you're not he wasn't even in, you know, over in Iran is what is how you say it. Um but in, in Iran and wherever he was, and man, I mean, I mean he was getting in. I was impressed, like, man, he nobody no training or nothing, and you just out fighting heels and I think he found a stadium or something and just was getting it in. Yeah, man. Nobody is safe. Brothers <laughs> always <laughs> wanna clown yeah, each other. You know, you know, you know, you, you know how it is, you know when the, when the you know when the litter is low, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> You know, you, you you get you get people really speaking out about themselves. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. But you know, yeah, but we 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 don't, we don't want to. It's not about my accolades. It's about Eric's accolades. You know what I'm saying? All that stuff is in the past. That's why I'm in Hollywood now, guy and myself, because you know all that stuff we used to do back in the day. I mean, you know, I do it in Hollywood now. Yeah, you know I mean, I can be a film. I can be a 57 year old rookie. <laughs> <laughs> How do you get away with everything? I can just bring I can just bring Eric in and run do the stunt for me and put my picture, put my head on his box. You know I'll do it for you, Uck, for sure. You know I will. Yeah. Real quick, because because I don't think I've ever got to do this and I want to do it because because smooth get to do it on the platform. I want to do it right now. Ladies and gentlemen, you are tuned in. On the last Wednesday of the month, this is the Man Cave. I am your boy Stanton, along with Sadal, T-Bone, Craig Black. And we got our special guests first up. Eric McWoods. And St. Louis actor and comedic legend. Yes, sir. Mr. Joe, Joe Torrey. Joe, Joe Torrey, yes. <laughs> Craig, I remember you you had a question before we brought in Joe. You had a question for Eric. I, I guess I was gonna ask about his um the league that he's in. What what times, I guess what time frame does your league actually play? Are you um is your league in play now? What what's your, what's your season? What time is your season? How about that? So every country, well most it depends. So certain countries they play from we certain instance in Ireland we play from uh January. So we have preseason January all the way to November. But if you go maybe leagues like Spain, England, they play from uh it'd be from July to May. So each kind of country sometimes has its own way because I think it has to do with maybe weather or you know, different aspects of when they want to start the league. But yeah, so every league, like I said, I've been I was in Ireland from January to it's November, so it's about what is that about a almost ten month season? Yeah, yeah about ten months season. 10 months. Yeah, wow. so play wow. about forty yeah. games. Yeah, so I was going to ask you how many games? Yeah, how many games? That's forty, like forty some games. Forty, yeah, you thirty six in league, and then you you have cup games, but they don't even count. You know, games, friendly matches, like you know, scrimmages, things like that. So it's it's, it's a lot of games. I ain't gonna fake it. So <laughs> that's why you got to be healthy, and you know, Trump's you got to take care of your to body. Do the math. He said forty, then thirty six, and then it's cup games yeah. down to count for it and scrimmages. Yeah, I, I think we're in the triple digits right now. <laughs> nah, it ain't that crazy, but it's definitely a lot of games and stuff like that. So you know, that's why you know fitness and what you eat, you know how you take care of your body, and it's super important. You know, so that's you know, like, and you know. I was, and that's one thing I wanted to touch on. I don't know if we mentioned it earlier. But I know when you first got over there, that was a big thing. I was like, how are you finding your protein? How are you eating right? And how do you yeah. find food, you know, that you like <laughs> in these <laughs> other countries that, you know, that are not, you know, American, not especially not so yeah. Southern. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, how it's definitely like it's, it's different, you know, obviously, because, you know, at home, you know, it's I would say it's a lot more. It's easier you know, here, because, you know, you have sometimes you have more options, but it's also kind of a curse, too, because, you know, you got white castles, you know, you know, the Chinese food here, you know, a bunch of other aspects and food that we want to eat and stuff like that. But overseas, you know, strictly got to be like a high carb diet with like protein. So it's because you know, we running a lot and, you know, sometimes your weight fluctuates throughout the season. So it's really in terms of like you just got to make good decisions because, you know, I mean, they might got the good thing is they got probably one KFC in most countries. So like you ain't even, you know, we don't eat, I don't even eat KFC over here. So it's like I really just got to be able to balance and try to just, you know, do a lot of cooking, too, which is like really important for me trying to just, you know, stay away from sugar and things like that. So we got to right. not eating KFC just in case there's an endorsement <laughs> down yeah. the line. You yeah, know, make sure nothing no, but, can come but, back. But when you when you first got over there, when you cooking a lot of your own stuff. 
Yeah, I was cooking everything. Yeah, like I said, and, but sometimes the team feeds us. You know, we can get food from them. But yeah, for me, I like to do my own cooking because I know I know my body. You know, I'm I'm to a point now where I know my body. I know what I need to eat. I know what I need to fuel to make myself play at the highest level possible. So you know, that's the you know just being a young Gordon Ramsay going crazy in the kitchen. So that's the main thing. You know, man, you discipline, so, man. You real discipline. So so, what's the first yeah. thing you gonna hit when you get to St. Louis? Uh, I hit some. I got some emos. <laughs> Yeah. You know how to get Chinese food. Yeah. Hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So St. Louis question. Where you get your Chinese food from? Uh Lamb's Garden, you sit in the aisle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The one with the cats in the back. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. Nah, you know what I'm talking about. Nah. Nah. That's one I was I'm thinking saying. it, but I wasn't gonna say it. I wasn't gonna say it. <laughs> No. I let the, let the comedian say it. He can get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, he's got a point. I'm going to tell y'all, it's one in the city. I'm not going to pinpoint it exactly, but I kind of am by, by saying what's there. It's the it's the Chinese restaurant right there, and next to it, it's a cat clinic. Like, oh. they straight up oh, you shouldn't have said that. cat clinic. Like, not, not a pet clinic. It specifically says cat oh my God. clinic. The minute I noticed that, I said, I already I know what you're talking about, too. Okay, so we're not going to say it out loud, but me and Sadal are here. <laughs> but the cats okay. go in. The cats come I... in, but they don't go out. <laughs> <laughs> I brought my cat in because it was coughing up a weird hairball. Uh, hey, one thing I learned about when I first came to St. Louis, probably a year in, is when I went and ate Chinese food in East St. Louis, they told me I was at the Chinaman. I wasn't at the, Ch- I wasn't at the Chinese. I was at the Chinaman. China. I'm not that, no or the rice house. The rice, rice house. house. Rice house. Rice house. Rice house. It's the rice house. I'm like, why? Why are you at the rice house and I'm not at the Chinese rice house? I, I didn't understand. I was at two different, you know what I'm saying? Depends on what area you grew up in. Uh-huh. Okay. All right, that's what it is. Okay. But yeah, right. you know, you know, in the county, they actually have them and they're called the rice house. Like that's the that's the brand name. I like, guess what they I mean, okay. b- b- back in the day where you can get a tripe sandwich on just about every corner. <sighs> CNK barbecue, man. Mm. Uh, you know what I'm hey, yeah. But I'm saying, but 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 Eric, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you, you make Eric, you know about CNK. I don't know what I'm saying. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Hey, hey, but let me tell you something, right. Eric. Don't don't do what I did uh, when I came home. When I used to come home from St. Louis and try to get it all in in one weekend, you know, White <laughs> Castle's steak and shake. And, uh, uh, the, you know, chops to get my St. Paul, all that, man, all my favorite stuff. And by Sunday, man, I couldn't even boo boo. I was so locked up. I will never do that again. My inside, I gotta be the one to like, tell you. They say, dude, what you doing? You ain't about to do it this weekend. <laughs> Look, I can relate. When I moved back here, I went to every place that I could. As soon as I forgetting that I moved that I moved back permanently, I was going to White Castles. We didn't have Jack in the Box where I was at. Go to Jack in the Box. Go to Emos. The Pasta House Company. Yeah, I I went to every place I could. The the Chinese place that I go to right over here off of Olive and Eighty Second. I was trying to get everything I could. <laughs> And like the St. Louis food, man. Also, I just want to say, <laughs> rest in peace to the steak and shake and the jack of the boxes here in St. Louis. They 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 dropping like hot, they dropping like flies, yeah. man. Oh, yeah. oh man, you know, Eric, with all this food talk, I know you you have some a good willpower, and I know you got a a, a great training regimen. You know, you dedicated mm-hmm. to the gym. Tell us about your your training regimen. You know, what does that look like from day to day? How do you train? Uh, well, preseason is usually probably the craziest in terms of the team. So collectively, because preseason, we could be doing two to three sessions a day for about a month and a half, you know, obviously having games, scrimmage and stuff like that there. So usually when the season comes, usually one training a day. And sometimes we'll do a a weight session in the morning, depending on, you know, which club you at. But for me, I'm usually, if I have one training session today, which is the practice, I'm usually probably doing another session, Uh, you know, whether it's going to the gym or even if it's – Stand up to practice and just shooting or just working on, you know, game, working on my game, trying to find ways to, you know, improve. So it's kind of for me, sometimes I had to be smarter because I used to overwork myself. So now I'm to a point now, you know, I'm I know I know my body and I know what I need to do to, uh, you know, to make sure I'm, I'm I'm healthy and I'm playing well. So for sure. All right. Real quick. Uh, there was a question that we saw and we want to get to it. How is it 
assimilating to life overseas. Y'all see how I pronounce that word? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me the language of origin, but yeah, how was it assimilating to life overseas? Yeah, shout out my boy Evan. Uh, I would say it definitely was a challenge at first because I didn't know what to expect. Like, you know, and the, I learned just being in America, you know, we're extremely grateful. You know, sometimes, I mean, it's a lot of you know, BS that goes on here, but we ain't got to speak on that. But in terms of just being over there, you really have to kind of, it's very, it's a lot slower. You know, it's in terms of you just got to really just, you have more time to yourself. So you really just got to, you know, adapt. Because, you know, I've been in different countries who speak Russian. They don't speak no English. So I got to find ways to maneuver and find ways to, to, you know, to get things done over there. So I would say, like, you really just kind of just, I would say don't have expectations. You really just kind of just adapt with the flow. Like, bro said, assimilate. And then from there, you know, you can really just adapt, you know, and especially, like, you know, being a black man overseas, we still got like a store, like a sore thumb. So it's different, you know. So obviously, you go to countries where predominantly white. So you know, people gonna be, you gonna walk into a store, people gonna look at you and all type of stuff. But you know, you just something, you just kind of just got to deal with. So, so. Do the teams afford you security while you overseas? Sometimes dealing with some of the stuff you have to deal with. Uh no, I, no, no security. Like in, when I was in uh, Jordan, we would have. It would be our games would be we'd have police escorts to the game and stuff like that, like armored trucks and tanks and over there and stuff like that. But like, but for most part, uh, nah, I, no, no security. So, obviously, you know, I just, <laughs> yeah, you just something you kind of just got to deal with, you know, obviously leaving the game. But when you out there in the, you know, in the real world, just walking around, going to a store, you got to deal with it on your own. So, yeah. Also, want to shout out uh, guys comment. You are right. We can't say that word. I'm not gonna yeah, say it. Yeah, I didn't want to say it know, either, bro. We, we, we can't say it. Yeah, I would say. Craig came on here strong with it. He was like, <laughs> it was. Oh, like, oh, what we, missed a seven second. we missed the seven second button with that one. Um, Craig tried well, to get us. I, 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 Craig was like, I got thanks to you. Let's get this show real quick. Let like, me let me geez. apologize to all my Asian brothers and sisters. <laughs> I am not. Let me pull out my paper again. I am not in in any way. Uh, uh, racist or anything like that to my Asian brothers and sisters. Okay, all right, my my little nah. five minutes, man. Damn, I ain't mean hey, to. Man. I... Hey man, come on, man. That's that's what they used to say back in the day to China. Man. This is the same. You you can get rid of it, Joe. You you can get away with it, Joe. I can't, I mean, man. I'm on, not. Man. You get to the point where you're so scared you can't say nothing no more. I mean, come on. I'm like, you know, I, how you know I got my own way. Maybe I can't say Chinese, man. Like maybe I can't say Chinese. <laughs> Cut it down. Uh, I, I ain't I ain't scared of all that old cancel culture. Right, is, is, the stream, is the stream still up? Is it, is it still running? Is it? Is it <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the, if, they, if that was a period of time, is what we call people call the rice house and call it other stuff. I mean, just people know it ain't like we made a skit about it. We just spoke about, hey, when we grew up, this is what they said stuff. So, you know what's funny is when I was like when I was a kid, like in middle school, high school, like I remember. I, it also depends on where you grow up in the city too, because like. It wasn't a thing that I ever heard till I got to school, and I didn't even know what people were talking about at first when right. people used to say that. So, it just depends on where you at. <laughs> I, I mean, you know. yeah, I mean, some, um, I mean, man, I mean, I gotta eat my protein. Eat my protein. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, man, ain't that something? He got the food over there. He's like, yeah, you like know, some Greek yogurt. yogurt. And, well, no, it's not a yogurt. It's a fruit thing with some acai, acai. However, if anybody wants to give a check to the platform sports talk show or the man cave here, please send that plot send that email to platform sports talk at gmail.com. So uh that is platform sports talk show at gmail.com. We can make sure that. If you would like to sponsor the show, we will make sure that you have that opportunity. Well, I guess this since we're here, you can check us out on Roku. You can check us out on Hot 365 Radio. Hey, look, it's hot. It's always hot out there. You want to make sure that you check us out because you never know who's going to pull up. Right now, we got Joe Torrey. Who knew that that was going to happen? Well, maybe somebody knew, but who, who else <laughs> out there knew that that was going to happen? But, you know, listen to us. You can hear Joe Torrey out there. And, hey, you know – um, since I didn't really plan on doing this right now anyway, and I'm kind of lost on what I was saying. Hey, you know what we got coming up next week? <laughs> next week, we got a super show coming out there. The Man Cave. We got Ladies Night. We got the super show December 7th, December 28th. You never know who's going to pop up as we just shown this week. And next week, we're going to have 
the ladies, the fellas, all those opinions. Bunny's called out Stanton. Stanton's called out Bunny. Who is going to have an opinion that you that's going to resonate with you? Let's find out next week, December 7th. The Man Cave, the Ladies' Night, Super Show. Check it out. Why you on some YouTube? Oh, oh, okay. All right. The first Wednesday of the month is normally Ladies' Night, but as we talked about, Super Show coming out. But hey, normally you get the Ladies' Night, get the panel of ladies out there, get their opinion out. And of course, right now we're looking at the Man Cave, so no need to plug that one. And uh, yeah, I think that's about all I got right now. <laughs> Thank you, T Bone, for that lovely promotion. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Real nice. quick, before we move any further, <laughs> we want to thank you, uh, Mr. Tory, for coming on this show. Thank you for gracing us Shout with your home. presence. We got a straight yes. comedy and Hollywood legend in here, hometown product, too. So we want to thank you for coming on. Uh, it's always a pleasure. We got to get you back on here soon, man. We got to get you back on here. Gotcha, gotcha. You know, no, no problem. We'll, we'll, we'll connect just like we did this time. I was happy to be able to be a part of my nephew's, uh, you know, his part, his, his his interview. Man, that was a, you know, hopefully, I'm glad I couldn't miss it. Another goat, another goat. Hey, hey, real quick, before you go, I gotta ask because I see it in the background there. I see yeah. a green and gold band thing in the back. What what band was that? Oh, that was um, that was actually Southwest. I, I majored. I, I was in Soda and Southwest, so I went to Soda and I, you know, and I lettered in a. Uh, I majored. I lettered in the band, and um, <clears throat> and and both. So I, I was well, curious. Was about... but wrestling, football. Uh, is what Wait, I, did you just say wrestling? Yeah, yeah, wrestling. Oh, see, see, look at this. Look, no, got Joe Tory out here, f- fellow wrestler and band member, as myself. You know, you know, hey, that's man, the we, we don't play with that. You know, my name is, you know, my name is always, you should stay in this book right here. You know what I'm saying? Like that, state oh. chapter, all that back. You know what I'm saying? He's, you ever seen him? You, did you make it that far? I don't know if you ever made that far. I, I went to sectionals. I didn't make it to state. Oh, he's yeah. So, yeah. We, did, we didn't have the, the best program out there at the time. Well, you know, it, it, it was what it was. That wasn't every, you know, that's it was like soccer was, you know. That that sport was like, what? Black people doing that? But, you know, hey. Like, <laughs> um Gave me a chance to really, it really changed my life, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, just hand in hand combat, playing football, but wrestling, you know what I'm saying? It's one of the most gruesome and most, you know, in shape sports you have to, you know, you can never, you know, uh, probably prepare for next to soccer because, you know, it's like you could grab somebody to defend yourself for like three minutes at a time <laughs> and get slammed on your head. It ain't moving and punching, it's hand to hand combat. Wrestling, uh-huh. grabbing, throwing, trying to get you from getting your neck broke. You know what it is. So I used to I used to do like I used to go over to uh, Forest Park um, during the summer. So I wrestled year round just to stay in shape. I wrestled you know Greco Roman and AAU and the Olympics and all that stuff. So so you know it's kind of like uh, kind of like what Eric does. You know year round you don't get hey you stay you stay ready you ain't got to get ready. Preach preach. <laughs> all right. Hey man, one before I don't know how long you're gonna be on here, but uh, how can I get that top you got on, man? What is that? <laughs> Oh, uh, this right here. Oh, uh, this is guy got this in London, Unc. Uh, <laughs> that's hot. That's hot, that's hot right there. He said this exclusive cloth right so, here. Some drip from you, uh, Unc. Oh, looking at you, Unc. Uh, trying to get drippy, so, you know. Yeah, you got you drippy drip over there, man. <laughs> right on, right on. You got that London gear right. on. You got some of that London drip on, man. Yeah, you know, got to get, gotta get decent, like you said, so... <laughs> So uh, right. I, I, how cold is it in St. Louis, uh, my 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 companions? Is it getting there? It's in the twenties, man. Yeah. It's in the twenties, is it? About 20s, I think so. Wow, it? It? it was like sixty degrees yesterday. Okay. At, when that wind started blowing, up, what? About thirty-two, <laughs> about thirty-two <laughs> degrees. Um, you know, according to the clock, but it's cold, man. It's cold. Yeah, don't come here with my summer clothes. No. A nah. couple days, huh? <laughs> I mean, a couple days from now, you might be able to. Yeah. You know, this weather. It's St. Louis, so you never know. Yeah. So at least bring bring a little leather jacket, not a big leather jacket. You got to go out in the bubble coat, some shorts, and some Timberlands. Like, you got to be prepared. <laughs> hey, this has been mild from what I can remember from when I was a kid, though. This this ain't the coldness that it used to be. I'll I'll just wait. Here yet. Just wait. Just, don't. Don't don't speed it up. Just Just wait. Welcome hey, back. Hey, I've been, li- I've, been, I've been living in Florida for the past fifteen years. I need. I, yeah, I want to experience an authentic St. Louis cold winter. Okay. I, I don't. Oh, know. I, I, oh, running to her like you run into your high school sweetheart at the yeah. grocery store when you move back. That's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna trying to hit. You. I'm trying to hit some folks the out there. You know what I'm saying? So, you, to, to really experience that, is you got to live through it. You just can't come and visit. 
check, ooh, and then get back on the plane and go back to sunny, you know, Florida. You got to stay through the whole. You got to stay there. You got to stay there through the whole winter. Hey, I'm I'm back for the Okay, okay. Well, hey, well, well then you are gonna get what you asked for. <laughs> don't catch that man. <laughs> Look, we're gonna catch that man outside raking his lead. Be you know, January seventeenth. You scraping that ice off your windshield. You like, man, I should have stayed in Orlando. I mean, hopefully I'll still be working from home. Although I still have those two days a week that I do have to be in Orlando at that point. So you know, maybe that'll just be a whole week at that point. Yeah, maybe you go there and thaw out. Exactly. <laughs> 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 it is what it is. So, hey, so, E man, uh, it'd be good to see you when I when, when we get home, man. Uh, yeah, a couple hey, days hey, on. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Mom, so. My mom's 85th. You know what I'm saying? It'd be good to see you, man. Bring that, bring that sweatsuit with you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you too, huh? Yeah, no, I know you're know, you yeah, no, gonna take it up off me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you're gonna lose that one. <laughs> Sticky fingers, baby. <laughs> hey, Joe, we're about the hey, same uh, size. We about the same size too. Yeah, I know uh, you're a little bit bulky. <laughs> in the previous comment, guy said take him to a prime 55. Man, I got shot them out, man. My man Orlando, man, man, he rest in peace, rest in power, man. Him and uh, T Love. Got that Prime 55 right in there. I think that's in the Dale Malou right across from the pageant. Yep. Mm-hmm. That Prime 55 restaurant. Real good, man. How long ago was that, though? Orlando passed, um, I want to say like four or five months ago. It's yeah, been that long since Orlando Park yeah. passed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You say you got a shot in there? No, 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 no. Orlando, uh, Orlando passed from uh, cancer. He had, he had cancer. Oh, okay. He battled can He battled cancer for a long time, man. He actually, um, I think he was like ten years in remission, and, and just came back. You know, that cancer terrible, man. So, I think he yeah. lost a lost a leg. Was it? Yeah, was it? Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Real good dude, too, man. Real good dude. So, Prime Fifty Five still kicking. Prime Fifty Five still kicking. Got some great food over there, man. They got two locations too. And you check okay. that out. Okay. Well, we're gonna have yes. to, yeah, we're gonna you know, have to we do still that. here, Cave. We still got a lot of show to discuss. Joe, you staying on with us? <laughs> Joe will have to. All right. <laughs> uh, but brother, yeah, as long as he keep doing this, well, Joe have all some booty shorts. <laughs> here they go. <laughs> Only for you guys. God, you gotta let him go. Move on with you. <laughs> Only for you guys. I wear them just. I wear them for you. <laughs> Apparently, you know, my, my little brother's worried about my booty. Um, I don't know That's why. I don't know love. if he's <laughs> I don't think it's probably love right yeah He gets booty short or something. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know where so, he's so going with that conversation, but uh, you know. No guy, I won't. <laughs> uh whatever. Uh but anyway, um hey Eric, so look, um now this is what I one thing I always want to ask because I asked my sister this, but with the teams that are um, that are in USA, uh, as far as um, the, the I guess the teams that um, LA teams or something like that, what's what's the level between that difference between the, the 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 teams that don't go to the World Cup but they are professional teams like Dave Stewart owns a soccer team, um, mm-hmm. but. Where, where is that into relation with, you know, uh, where you are and where, like, come back, like I said, coming back home to play, come back home and play for St. Louis. And he's like, ah, yes. that's a different type of division. That's a different type of, you know, it ain't just coming back home to play because I'm on this level and that's that. Can you break that down? Yeah, it's it's because there's so many leagues in Europe and around the world, so you, in the States. So it's kind of like, there's like a similarity, but it's also kind of like a, because obviously, you know, England and France and those leagues are top. And when you, when you kind of get out of the big six, I would say, like, out of the six countries, that's the low. That's kind of where it lower is. So you got, like, United States. You got Ireland. You got all these other countries and stuff like that. So it's almost kind of similar. It's just a matter of just, you know, the fit and the style of play. And it, I could go all day. But, yeah, it's just it's it's similar, but it's also different in, a ter- in terms of, like, how the style of play is and, like, the location and stuff like that. Obviously, the U.S. is a lot more marketed than other countries, but the, the – level of the league still might be the same if that makes sense so yeah yeah it makes sense because people don't know that over there i mean that's you know they grew yeah, up, yeah they, so. they grew up kicking in the, in the belly over there you know what i'm saying <laughs> they <laughs> they see him kicking they start kicking the ball over there man they start playing you know football which they call over there 
um, you know, when we don't pick that, that up until just like this, like them coming over trying to pick up basketball or baseball or, or our drive mm-hmm. sport, but soccer over there is so that's what you do. <laughs> that's what that's what makes you your money. That's their number one when you go over that country. That's like you see why it's such a craze because it's like, but now nah, this is this is it. Now I'm I'm, I'm having a soccer player. And, yeah, and, uh, <laughs> so that, that's yeah, and they and they and they crazy with it. My son played, and I was, they drove me crazy. I'm like, man, it went from you know uh, one hour a week at practice to a game. Like, okay, he became the best one, and they kept moving up. From Simmons, you know, Premier League, they went they went from the silver to the gold to the Premier, and then it was like oh, yeah, we, we got practice four days a week, and the games on the weekends. It's like, where's my life? These <laughs> kids is playing every <laughs> no, exactly. weekend, practicing four times a week, gone during the weekend, and you got to be you there go with pass, go like, pass, go pass, pass. No, I got sports. Yeah, so it's crazy. No, it's definitely a grind. So. <laughs> You know, to, for, to try to, to get an American to catch up to that level, it's like that's how much time they have to put in. And I'm like, mm-hmm. Exactly. No, it's, it's like, a grind for sure. Knees out. <laughs> yeah, no, it's crazy. So <laughs> definitely something you just got to work at. And, you know, I know, cause I know just you, keep grinding. You've been, you know, yeah, you've been playing since you were born, so. <laughs> yeah, out the womb. <laughs> Right, so you we, guys we, got else, you guys get anything else to say? It w- so, went out. I didn't hear. Joe, can you hear us? Yeah, I said. Do you guys have anything else to say? Oh no, I have. I don't have any I more comments. You. Um, I'm trying thing. to get on this workout plan. I need to get my fat ass in shape. So next time I'm in St. Louis, so hopefully you, you there, Emax, so you can help me out. I need to drop <laughs> like thirty that. pounds, man. <laughs> it was like, that. Hey. <laughs> hey, you need to do some pushbacks <laughs> from the table, huh? <laughs> <laughs> table. <laughs> <Pushbacks. Brown liquor. laughs> That's the problem. Yes, the brown. That yak. Yeah. <laughs> hey. You gonna keep this yeah, yeah, yeah. moving? Right, you gonna switch it from football to football? If that makes sense. Oh yeah! Before we move on, your, your mom, your mom bragging on her son indirectly, but directly, she told us to ask you. So we got move topic. She, yeah, she told us to ask you about being in the uh, the FIFA video game, yeah. the EA FIFA video game. Talk to us about that. Yeah, you know it's this game. I always had a dream since I was young to be on a video game and to play. So like to be on there and to play as myself, like you know, it's, I think it's super fun. I got my boys play with me, and then. You know, you got sometimes you got little kids who DM you and be like, oh, I'm playing with you on FIFA. So it's like, oh, this is a good experience. You know, it's blessed to be able to be on a video game and kind of see yourself on there. And I think it's uh, some something I always dreamed of. That's when I knew I was I was you know doing well, stuff like that. So, you know, every, every kid growing up has that dream to be in a video game, mm-hmm. whether it be FIFA, 2K, yeah. uh, Madden. Mm-hmm. Shout out to shout out to John Madden. Man. He also rest in peace. Rest in peace for sure. <laughs> Speaking of John Madden. We're going to move into this football talk. Y'all see what I did now? Yeah, It wasn't one of my cleanest ones, but you know, a win is a win. We're going to move into this uh, NFL football talk. You know, American football, tackle football. Um, you know, we got, some, we got some happy people on this panel. We got mm-hmm. some sad people on this panel. And uh, we're going to talk about it. It's time to get into these NFL standings. Ah. Craig, if you can tackle the AFC for me. Woo. AFC, why well, I gotta go through? Oh, you, 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 something. I'd say, okay, AFC <laughs> East. I tell you, boy, uh, we got the Dolphins at the top because I got my man Tua as my quarterback on my fantasy football team, throwing in at Sorry, least 30 team. points a game. Um, so you got the Dolphins eight and three, you got the Bills eight and three. I think the Bills are going to collapse too. Uh, the Jets are seven and four, and you got those New England Patriots six and five. All right, you want me to go through all all right. the whole AFC? Uh, Nah, nah, nah. T-Bone, okay. tackle the North for me. Oh, we got the AFC North. We got those Baltimore Ravens at 7-4. and four. We got the Cincinnati Bengals tied for first place at 7-4. and four. The Cleveland Browns, well, they're down at 4-7 and seven, along with the Pittsburgh Steelers, also at 4-7. and seven. You know, they, they chugging along. <laughs> uh, so, dog, go ahead and hit the AFC South. All right, AFC South, you have the Tennessee Titans at 7-4. 
And Luke, who's in second place, we got the Indianapolis Colts, 4 7 and 1, Jacksonville Jaguars, 4 and 7. And sadly, you got the you got the Texans there. One win. One nine. One. Man, and then one, over one. in the AFC West, we got the Kansas City Chiefs sitting nice at nine and two. Uh the Los Angeles Chargers sitting there at six and five in second place. Uh in third place, we've got the Las Vegas Raiders. Still getting used to that at four and seven. And we got Broncos Country. They're not riding nothing. Uh, sitting at three and eight, and that's the AFC. Uh, Craig, if you could tackle the NFC East for us, please. Oh, yeah. thank you, sir. I really appreciate this, sir. Thanks a lot. Uh, we got the best division in football right here. Uh, we not got really. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, the, yes, it is the best division in football. Um, up. The Philadelphia Beagles are ten and one. I mean, Eagles are ten and one. The Dallas Cowboys. I mean, Cowboys are eight and three. The New York G Men. Uh, seven and four, and those Washington Commanders, seven and five, looking at the playoffs, maybe. Uh, that, that's the NFC East, the best division in football. Go right ahead, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so, dog, can you tackle NFC North for me? NFC North, man, you have the have the um, Minnesota. Um, oh, oh, man, the, the Vikings. Yes. <laughs> Wait a <laughs> <laughs> the heck was that? The Vikings at nine and two, <laughs> and you have the Lions. Call the paramedics. <laughs> and a mini stroke. Man. We've got the Vikings <laughs> at nine and two, man. They're ahead, right there in the NFC North. You got the Lions coming, coming along. They're they're surprisingly, you know, they four and seven, but they're in second place. Aaron the Hunt, Green Bay. I don't know what happened this year. They're four and eight. And then the Bears, three and nine. All right. T-Bone, can you talk about the NFC South? Oh, really? Yeah, you thought I was going to give you that? Absolutely not. (laughs) And please. All right. All right. Okay. Well, nobody here has a winning record. So (laughs) Um, we got uh, Tom Brady's Buccaneers at five and six. Followed by the Atlanta Falcons at five and seven, the Carolina Panthers one game behind in third place at four and eight, and also the New New Orleans Saints also fourth place with four and eight one game behind. So I don't know are they the most competitive or are they just not getting it together? But either way, I, I would say. I have watched uh, both matches between the Falcons and the Panthers, and those were some very competitive games. Uh, came down to, honestly, penalties and just missed calls. So I, I would say that there's a lot of competition within the NFC South. And it's like when you talk about them, you just got to say, okay, the Bucks suck, but they're not as bad as the Falcons. But then the Falcons ain't as bad as the Panthers. Hey, 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 Panthers. hey, hey. I see what you're doing here. No, speed it along. Let's get to the next one, all right? Let's get to the next yeah. one. Let's yes, get let's one. get to the next one. Yes, <laughs> let's go. Stop prolonging. Uh, Joe Torrey, if you would please run down the <laughs> NFC West. <laughs> Joe, we can't hear you. You might be on Did you mute yourself? <laughs> Hold on now. Wait a minute. Cause, Cause I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> I ain't saying it. He must be mute. Yeah, there's no sound coming out there. There's no sound. He's going in and out. You can hear the words that are coming out of here. And unmuted, so I don't know what happened. All right, uh, Joe, if you can exit out and log back in for us, log out and log back in. You did that already? All right, yeah, log. All right, and then we'll see you in a second. All right. All right. Uh, well, somebody's got to do this. I'll go ahead and do the NFC West. Uh, all right. I got it. I got it. I got it, Sadar. I got it, Gracious. We have the Rams in the oh. NFC West. But above them, uh, <laughs> we, we unfortunately have the Cardinals. Uh, but we beat them in the playoffs. Um, above them, we have the Seattle Seahawks. We see them this week. That's going to be a win. And above them, 
Above the Seahawks, we have the team that we beat last year to get to the Super Bowl, which they haven't been able to get to in like the last four or five years, and they haven't won it. God knows. You're talking for right about now, you in the Super Bowl in 2020. That's the pandemic. You never, the you never remember the, the, the losers of the Super Bowl. You never remember the losers. But but yeah, we the, the 40 whiners ain't whining right now. I guess they they happy, they satisfied. You know, they'll find something to complain about later. What I mean, the, uh, it's regular season, you know. Hold on, wait a minute. I'm doing regular season. You know. a life size bottle of gin. I'm like, you all right over there? <laughs> whoosh, just, hell yeah, my commander's winning. Like, I'm feeling real good right now. Things, huh? I just some water in my orange juice bottle, man. That's all that is, man. Dude, but let's talk about what a backup quarterback. Yeah, Isn't hey, it like, phenomenal? I mean, it's quarterback. Come on, man. Look, really? and, and, and I, I, I ain't focusing on y'all. Sadal, my my brother, yes. my yes. fellow Rams fan, my Super Bowl celebrating brother. Right. Uh, we we know you got to get out of here. Uh, you, you got you have engagements to go do. You got to go do your yeah. thing. Uh, any last words before you uh, get on out of here? Well, first of all, um, I want to thank Joe Tory, Eric McWoods for coming on and gracing this this show. Um, really appreciate y'all coming on. Um, it's always going to be go Rams. I don't care where they play. I don't care what position they are in the standings. It's always going to be go Rams. They're going to be going and, to um, Eagles for the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. And um, <laughs> I've got a seat right next to me for all those 49ers, 40 Winer fans when they lose and choke in the playoffs. Right here next to me. We got, hey, we, we, I got a crying towel and everything for you. Hey, all set you, up. Look, if you want to be a part of a team that wins the Super Bowl and is the first team in 20 years to have a losing record, then you could go to the Los Angeles Rams. But if you want to be a part of a team, if you want to be a part of a team with five, one, two, three, four, five Super Bowl victories. Hey, you come roll with the 49ers. Too bad uh people don't really remember something from 1994. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean nearly 30 I years mean, ago I, almost. I, I remember something from 1994. Hey, listen, can, can you can you guys hear me now? Yep. Yeah, we got yeah. back on. Yep, yep. Now I you know, I don't know if I missed something, but I mean, you know, uh, evidently, you know, I'm I, I got two teams. I'm a diehard Raider fan. Grew up with the Raiders and stuff like that. My Raiders is gonna win out. So I don't know if y'all <laughs> overlooking that. The Raiders are gonna win out. Don't don't the Raiders gonna win out. The Rams is done. <laughs> and you know, yeah, I, I, I you mean know, Rams is done. Too many commercials, too many commercials, too much Hollywood has bit him in the butt. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know, Stafford, you know, he can't, you know, he you know, he billboard McVeigh on the billboard. You know, Jalen Ramsey getting his hair braided every other, you know, quarter. So, you know. <laughs> he he worried about his jewelry and his bra- his hair coming on braided every other play. I'm like, come on, man. Will you, will you tackle somebody? Anyway. Uh, but that's what it is. 49ers, they ain't going nowhere, man. Hmm? Oh. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> it was the white team up. <laughs> Hey. I mean, I hate to say it because you're a special guest on the show, but <laughs> you know what? I, I can't even say it no more because I mean, I don't even know where the Raiders are. What what, what city are they in these days? Los Los Angeles, <laughs> Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Oakland. Where where they at? Where they at? I like that graphic. That's what I'm talking about. Super, super producer smooth. I like uh, that graphic gotta, right there. I gotta head out, y'all. Y'all have a great uh, rest of the show, man. All right. <laughs> Leaving out like the like the Rams chances of winning. Yeah, I said Raiders. Hey, that's a nice graph you got there, Smooth. I take that seven seed all day. Woo! Well, well, I take that seven seed like right now, Craig. Woo! That look that look real nice there, Tim. Uh, uh, T Bone, (laughs) that look real nice. (laughs) Who the hell is Tim? Oh, that look real good, Tim. Tim, my bad, T Bone. (laughs) The feet don't even stand for Tim. Like, what? (laughs) Damn, seven feet. 
I hope we can hold on to that though for real. I mean, it's 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 a long season. I mean, it's been a long season, and we just we we kind of put something together. I think we're putting in that dude that Heineken. Um, we 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 kind of we done leveled off a little bit. We've turned our division into the best division in football. Like I said, you know, with our winning record, and you think of what the Eagles have done, and and I don't I hate to say them cowgirls, but they are balling right now. I mean, we got a great division. I think that we can really do something. We can scare some people if we really make it into the playoffs, for real. I'll give credit where credit is due. That entire division is in the playoffs if the season were to end right now. Yeah, but, but, it's, but it's not. <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> okay. Y'all got, y'all got plenty of time to have a championship <laughs> season. Anyway. Mm-hmm. We gonna keep it moving on. Uh, let Let's talk about since we're talking about it. Let's talk about the struggles for for some of these teams, man. When you look at the divisions, if we could pull that back up, who who would have thought that though they're at the top, Tom Brady would be at the top of a division with a losing record? Like, I, I'm not upset about it, but just to see it, like, who would have thought that Tom Brady at his level that he demands for himself? would be here like what do you think some of the main struggles are for this team um i'm not gonna say it's from my point of view i don't think it's coaching i'm not gonna say it's coaching i'm thinking this it, it's it's just execution man it's 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 like they're not they haven't came together i don't know if it's because tom brady missed so much time in the preseason and that offense hasn't jailed or because it's on both sides of the ball. It's on the defensive side, too. So it can't be that. I, I can't put my finger on it why they're so bad right now. They're just not just not good. Maybe Tom is getting old. Maybe he is 40 years old, for real. Maybe he's just not that golden, that Superman that everybody thought he was. I don't know. You know, it, it's something about that 20-year that mark. It's just... Just crossing sports here because you see it happening with LeBron. Like he he's been he's been on the bench a lot for year twenty, you know, with with these injuries. So it's like once you cross once you cross a certain point, it it's anticipated for Father Time to maintain his undefeated streak. Like you know, like we say, like we love to say on the show, Father Time is undefeated, and I would say that's showing with the Buccaneers. Um. I'll talk about my Rams. You know, I'll talk about it. It's fine. Uh, we 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 have been facing a lot of injuries uh, to key players. You know, we've got Cooper Cup out for the rest of the season. Uh, Matthew Stafford. I mean, it really doesn't matter at this point. But his injury, Aaron Donald, was just uh, listed as out with a high ankle sprain. So we the injuries have just hit us. You know, I blame to, to, I blame y'all coaching the, for, that, for that Cooper Cup injury. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm blaming right, coaching. Said- I'm blaming coaching for Cooper Cup's injury. Okay. Why are you blaming coaching? I mean, because they 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 went, they, they it's, it was too much Cooper Cup. I understand he's the man. You got to give him the ball. But they have, it's other pro players on that team that they mm-hmm. did not move the ball around to at all. I mean, even though he was wide open every time he got the ball, I don't know if he's just a bad dude out there. But still, it's like, you know, the scheme that who was that? Who was y'all coach? McVay? Is that his name? I don't I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just needed to go somewhere else with the damn ball. How about that? You know, it's up, you know what I'm saying? It's like everything you knew was going every other play, it went to Cooper Cup. I mean, you overused the guy and he got hurt. I mean, it is what it is. Hey, I, I, I do want to point something out with the Bucks though, because I'm just going back through here. They've only had one bad loss. All the rest of these games have been extremely close. So I think it's just a matter of, you know, right now things just aren't going the way they are. But I get the feeling that they're going to have a chance to to pull ahead. You know, not that their schedule gets easier, but, you know, they've uh, they've got a chance to, to win, some, win at least, you know, a few more of those games to get a winning record. All right. <clears throat> Lost my train of thought. Emac, you have a tackle football team. I'll say that. I ain't gonna fake it, bro. I saw you was rocking with the Rams and they left the city, so <clears throat> I ain't really rocking with the Rams like that, bro. Just yeah, that's what I'm talking about, man. Yeah, <laughs> I ain't gonna fake it, bro. I was, uh, yeah, damn, it was like Trader, so 
Me, I'm just yeah. a fan of football. So my homies, but nah, I I just can't rock the Rams like that, bro. I ain't gonna fake it. They left. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, man. You yeah, they left the city. Them bro. dudes. That's what I'm talking about, E man. <laughs> I mean, you know, nah, nah, let's, let's talk about it because everybody loves saying that, right? Did it hurt when they left? Yes. Were they ours to begin with? No. What were we? We were a long term rebound, and that's okay because we got a ring. We got a ring. We got a ring at home and abroad. Man, was you buying tickets at the uh, when they was at the Jones Dome? Oh, yes. Yes, that's cap. <laughs> Sitting up at the top, of all the way, that's I was true, back by the number. I was back by the number with the faithful fans, yeah. the outfits. And stuff. I I'll never forget. It was one guy every third down. He used to be like one, two, three, touchdown. And after he said it, he would just go like he was. He was casting the touchdown. Unfortunately, yeah. he was casting it to Mark Bulger and 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 shitty head coaches and defensive coordinator. Hey, Mark Bulger was trash. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say he he didn't he didn't get a fair shot, and then yeah. turned out to be trash. We didn't really help him out. Yeah, 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 but but uh, but yeah, you know, it's fine, it's fine. Ah, uh, what what I am excited to announce is that since you're talking about teams that left the city, let's talk about teams coming back real quick. I just want to shout out the St. Louis Battle Hawks. We can officially say it now. The Battle Hawks. Come on, Craig. Say it with me. The Battle Hawks. Come on, Craig. <laughs> Come on, Craig. Um, I'm going to say the D.C. Defenders. How about that? But go right ahead. <laughs> Come on, Craig. The Battle Hawks. Give me a DC, cacao. DC Give me a cacao. Defenders. I don't know what the defender's name is. Uh, I don't know what their call is, but I, I can't do the Battle Hawks. I don't know. Defend. No. Defend. no. We defend everything. <laughs> the yeah, fish. there you go. Defend. I like that. <laughs> we got commanders and defenders. They 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 mesh right together, man. It's it's a family here in DC, man. You know, oh, man. squads and squads is doing good. I bet I'll bet the defenders. Let's make a bet right now. I bet my defenders have a better record. Than those battle hawks this year. I don't think you want to do that. I'm you I'm doing what? it. You know what? I'm no, doing. I, do. I don't even know. I haven't looked at anything at all at any team. Haven't done any research, but I'm saying it right now. We'll have a better record than those battle hawks. How about that, man? Let me tell you something. I have I have so much faith in our battle hawks head coach and former man cave guest Anthony Bett. So I will mm -hmm. take you up on that bet, brother. What's the wage? Okay. What's the wage? Um, if I if I win. For uh, for two straight shows, you got to wear a Washington Commanders jersey on the show. Okay. <laughs> I, he said they sell those. <laughs> you don't have to provide it. I I don't know where to find one of those. All right. Well, <laughs> let's let's go ahead and do it then. Let's do it. It's it's a done deal. When I win, okay. I when I win, I need you. To Find a Super Bowl champion, St. Louis Rams shirt. It ain't oh, not Lord. not you LA. No, nah, I need St. Louis all the way back from the nine nine. That's what I need. Yeah, you can find it somewhere. Well, where am sure. I find that at? The internet. The internet. Same place I'm gonna have to find a Commander good jersey. Good. <laughs> that, that's good that's actually, take the thrift, Commander thrift store. directly thrift straight store, to the Okay. Way. I'll go to a thrift store and I can find out when I got you. Right. right next to the new commander's jersey. <laughs> Somebody bought one was like, nah. <laughs> All right. We're going to stay in this uh, football talk and we're going to shift it down a level uh, to something that most people view is more competitive. Let's get into this NCAA. Before we get into that, I want to bring up the, I want to bring up SWAC. I want to talk about swag. eBay. That's where you're going, Craig. You're going to eBay. I want okay. to bring up swag, man. Swag coach, NFL Hall of Famer, one of the NFL goats. Let's talk about Deion Sanders, man. So the rumors were swirling around that he was he was being looked at for other head coach positions just because of how well he's been doing at Jackson State. And to set everyone straight, all he said was the news is true. Everything is correct. They have been looking at me for a position. They've been offering me positions. Now, 
first off, I, I just want to go around and ask. I'm going to start with you, Eric. Yeah. Do you think that there is a chance that Coach Prime will take that opportunity at that other institution? No chance. 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 He's oh, staying. You, you said that confidently. 100. percent No, what he's doing with the team is crazy, you know, and it's great to see, especially at a black college like that. I love it. I don't think he's leaving at all because what he's doing there, I think they continue to build and make things happen. So doesn't know flat out no from there. <laughs> T Bone, as as a HBCU advocate, HBCU alumni, do you think do you think he's staying or do you think he's going? Uh I don't think he's going now. Um, I think that this is more of a just a negotiation, not even necessarily negotiation, but keeping his name out there, the type of stuff that you would do in any other type of business where, you know, you want to explore your options, but that don't necessarily mean you're leaving your, where you're at. But, uh, you know, it, this might not be the year for that, but a couple of years from now, a major opportunity, you know, for what people consider major opportunities may come out there that, Maybe an opportunity that he may be seeking out, right? He he, may, there may be things that he wants, and it, that may, job might not be out there right now, but it might be out there in a few more years. But for right now, we let's en, let's enjoy the ride while we can. Mm, all right. Well, uh, I guess it's only. Well, hold on, wait, 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 wait. wait. I, I want to save you for last. I want to save you for last, based on previous shows. Okay. I want to save you for last, Craig. Okay. Uh, I, me personally, I don't think. I, I want to say I don't think he's leaving, but I don't want to rule it out. I'm, I'm kind of in the boat with T-Bone. Um, it's not a it's not a right now move. You know, you might use this to get more money at Jackson State when contract negotiations come up. I feel like he'll stay the extent of his contract that he has with them now, and then he'll use the other the other opportunities to try to get the money that he truly wants or the money that he feels he's worth with what he brings to the school and with the uh, record of the teams. I, I say that he'll use that, and if he doesn't get it, then I'm pretty sure that he'll get the money he wants elsewhere. So, come on, Craig. Based off of uh, <laughs> the, the, the where we spoke about Coach Prime, and you you, you were so in depth and so passionate hey, about it. Hey, I'm 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 one of the biggest fans of Coach Prime and what he has done with H with his HB. Uh, H, I, H, know where he's going. I can't even say it HBCU, but um, but I'm hoping he doesn't go. I'm I'm really hoping he doesn't go. But I think, like T Bone said, eventually he will leave. But I'm not hope. I'm hoping it'll be like another two or three years before he does it. I think right now it's part of the marketing to make his value rise you know they they coming at him and he does what he does he's he's marketing himself he's marketing the team get, keeping them relevant and keeping that hbcu you know that name out there i believe he's led the renaissance for this whole hbcu movement so to lose him i think will be terrible for for the schools all hbcus you know in the swag outside of the swag because the buzz is going right now but you know it's I'm not a fool. I understand this. It's about the money. You know, I understand, you know, he got to, you know, somebody, if the right team offers the right check, he's, he's going to take it. That's not, that's just reality. But I'm just hoping it's not within the next two or three years. I hope it's, I hope he stays a little bit longer to get some other coaches that they can follow in his footsteps so they can follow his marketing tools and his ways of attracting the young recruits to back to the HBCUs. I just think, you know, that's what, I hope he does, but that's my take. All right. I'm 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 glad. I'm glad that we all got to talk about this. Uh I, I want to dial it back real quick because this just came across my phone. Uh I'm just now noticing it. There the plan to divide more than a half billion dollars in settlement money for the departure of the Rams from St. Louis was finalized. So we are now going to find out what this half billion is going to be allocated for. Hopefully it's these city streets. <laughs> good God damn. T-Bone, you lost, you, have you lost a tire since you've been back? That, that's the official welcome back when you hit a pothole and the tire light comes on. You know what? I, I, where I usually drive, I usually drive to the same few places. So I know where the, where the spots in the road are to avoid swerve around, you know. I, I I usually avoid all that, so I ain't got to those problems yet. 
I'm I'm not hip. So the the, the who gets the city gets five hundred million. Who gets the five hundred million? Well, we we gonna find out. They they I mean, are dividing it up for it's the settlement money that was paid to the city. So it's paid okay. to the city. Yes, but what it's gonna be paid for? We will be. I don't know if we'll ever oh, find out. Oh yeah, I ain't gonna see none of that money. My bad. I'm sorry. I hate them. <laughs> I'm gonna keep. Hey, Emac. I'm gonna keep it real. I ain't nobody gonna see none of that money. Ain't nobody <laughs> gonna see none of that. <laughs> Stadium. I ain't no. Huh? Huh? Who paid for the soccer stadium? It was funded by the the Taylors, the the family that founded and owns Enterprise. Oh, sure. Enterprise okay. Holdings. Let me say that because it's a big conglomerate. Mm. Mm. Let's see what they could do with that money is continue to build stuff up around there by Union Station and all. Well, I actually, well, uh, for Thanksgiving, I actually went down to the parade and I actually walked right past the stadium. Uh, saw the brand new stadium out there, so you know I could see them trying to you know build more stuff around there and build that ho- whole area up and make it a whole like entertainment center like the Orlando Magic is actually doing right now. Kind of like um, if you ever been out to uh, L.A. with the uh, Lakers, um, they have a whole entertainment complex around that. So I mean that might be a destination thing that they can you know use that money to make too. Do, do y'all Jerry think something like that too? Hmm. I'm not mistaken. I think Jerry Jones built the stadium somewhat like that as well. I think they have a, a small section right in front before you go in, and it's you like some, just something similar to like what the Cardinals have that type of entertainment. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's well, definitely the last couple. Of years. Yeah, but like the have, if you've been to LA Live, like it's a whole like it's a whole I've, entertainment district over there. Oh, I haven't been to LA. I haven't been to LA Live. Yeah, it's, it's, LA Live. It's, I, 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 I I can imagine LA Live is a lot bigger than what St. Louis has with the Cardinals, but but, but I mean Magic, the, the Magic population is something like that right now too. They've been they've been building it for the past few years, but they're building something just like that, where it's a basically making an entertainment district type thing right over there by the uh, by the arena. So, I mean, that seems like in that area, it seems like something that could be done too, where they just build more stuff up. Just got the aquarium in Union Station, got the soccer stadium down there. Not too far away from Bush Stadium, not too far away from the Enterprise Center. Like, just bring more stuff back to you know that general. You know, I don't. Would you call it down? Is that is that technically downtown? Is that you know whatever? Yeah. We want to call it. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I think once you pass Market, that's qualified as downtown. Not Market. Yeah. Once you go down Market past Jefferson. Do y'all think St. Louis can attract a, 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 a basketball team, an NBA team? Are we allowed to? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. No, I mean, it, 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 I, I was serious when I when I asked that question because I know that they had the whole thing with the uh, uh, what was it Spirit of St. Louis was that the team where when yeah, they had the whole ABA it. buyout, like there was a whole thing where they was basically like the team that was kind of in limbo that didn't transfer over but was still in existence. So I don't know if we can have a team right now, or I, that that deal may have expired by now. But I know that that was a thing for a long time. Definitely looking at that, and we will have it for you next week at the Super Show, going down December seventh. <laughs> you got the ladies of Ladies Night, the men of the Man Cave. Challenges have been laid down. We gonna see what happens. Real quick, uh, one more thing. Talk about in the NFL, and then we are gonna go through these college standings. Uh, Mister, no, I'm not gonna call him that. Uh, Deshaun Watson. The, the problem child of the NFL <laughs> this past offseason and in the season finally makes his season debut on week, what is this, 13? Week 13? So he's finally making his debut. Uh, Greg, I, I know you had your views. About you, you know this. what? And and I got to say, uh, I can admit when I'm wrong, and I must have been wrong because I thought, I really thought that Deshaun. Uh, his his first game back, it would garner a lot more coverage than it really has. But I think that has to do with I'm gonna blame the uh, I'm gonna I'm blame uh, Emac Sport. The uh, World Cup has taken the steam <laughs> away from <laughs> from Deshaun returning because I just knew that it was going to be um, a big story. I thought I thought it was going to be across. You know, they they talk about it, but it hasn't been talked about like that. Like I thought it would just because of all the allegations, all the settlements. I thought it would be a lot more fanfare, a lot more 
protests. I thought it would be just the top of news. And I just don't, I, I really, I don't see it. And I, and I was wrong. I, I, y'all were right. And I think it's because of the World Cup. FIFA, yeah, yeah. Emac, Emac sport, mm-hmm. you know. The, the other football did it. That's why we're not getting too much Deshaun Watson well, coverage they, right now. They, they announced it on, like, on your sports apps. They said that um, some of the, some of his people that are accusing him, his accusers will be at the game. Uh, that was that had made headlines, at least on the apps on ESPN and all of that. But the main conversations that I've been hearing is, you know, even though he he was listed as QB one, a lot of people are feeling like it's coming back and it's going to be a position battle because, you know, even though he wasn't anticipating leading the team as long as he has Jacoby Brissett, like something has to be said as as we call him on the show, Jacoby Brisket. Something something has to be said about the way that he's been able to, you know, it, it ain't been the best, but the, the the level that he's been playing at himself, it, it's definitely earned him a, a top spot. Like, it's earned him the top spot. So do you think with Deshaun coming back, they're going to put Brissett on the bench, or is, is it going to be an equal, like an equal number of reps between the two? Because you can't just, you can't just, thank you for your service, now sit down. I mean, you could, but it'd be oh, real oh, messed up. Oh, oh, yes, you can. When you pay a man, what do you got? Two hundred and thirty million gar- guaranteed. I think that's what he got. Something like that. Yes, you can. You can sit him down. Brissett can with his brisket. They can have a seat. Right, he can eat that brisket right on the bench and watch that dude ball. Come on now. He he got too much money for him not to be in the game playing. Come on now. He, I think was that. Did I have that number right? I don't know how much. Wait, wait. Here's a better question. Here's a better question. Do you think they're gonna sit Jacoby by the by the good heater on the sideline? Or do you think they're gonna sit him by the fun one and, and just give him one of those big like they may, you know, we gotta give him a good thank you for your service. I ain't know it was they, triple digit guarantee. Shit. I, pay I, right I thought I thought he got that much. I'm not I may be wrong. I may be wrong, but you cannot pay that man that much money and, and sit and and sit him on the bench. That's just you know, that's not that's not gonna happen. He's gonna play. Uh, and I think Jacoby Brissett should be a starting quarterback somewhere else. He should. I know somebody's gonna come after him if he's not locked up right now. I don't know what his contract oh, is. LA. He'll be somewhere else playing next LA year. They need to go after Brissett. We need to go after Rodgers. We need to go after whoever else is available yeah. as the season continues to dwindle. Real quick, uh, we're gonna tackle this top 25. So here's how we're gonna do this. We're going to start from number 25, Eric E. Mack. If you don't mind, we're going to throw yes, you in sir. on this too. So I think the order that we're going to go is we will start with Craig, and then we will mm-hmm. go E. Mack, and then we will go myself. All right, man, let's okay. do it. So, Craig, what's up? <clears throat> so, what am I starting? Number one or 25? 25. We're okay. going from the bottom. Uh, coming, in, coming in at number 25, we have NC State. Coming 24, we got Mississippi State. At number 23, we got North Carolina. And coming in at number 22, you have UFC. 21, wait, wait, we got whoa, 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 the... My bad, my bad, my bad. UCF, I'm sorry. Right, that's, 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 that's that dyslexia, dyslexia coming in, y'all. That UCF. Whole lot of miles. Rough in the past. The UCF, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. My bad. <laughs> All right, 21, we got the fighting Irish Notre Dame. Man, at number 20, hook them horns. We got Texas. The Texas? We, we got Texas. <laughs> at number 19, we got South Carolina. 18, Tulane. Damn. Man, at number 17, we got UCLA. Real quick, Craig, I'm going to steal this one from you. At number 16, oh, damn man. it, we got the University of Oregon. How we lose to the Beavers, the damn Beavers, <laughs> and then they got the nerve. Oh Jesus! Then they got the nerve to be above us, man. Yes, Beavers. coming at number fifteen is those Beavers that beat Oregon. Hey, hey, <laughs> Oregon, quick, Oregon I, State. We beat them Utes. We finally beat them damn Utes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Fourteen. We got LSU the Tigers. At number thirteen, we got them Knowles of Florida State. That's my girl from Florida State. At number twelve, at number twelve, we got Washington. At number who? <laughs> so who's the kid, bro? At number twelve. <laughs> Is that twelve in French? Uh, that's, number 12. Get, that's number twelve. That's number twelve. We got culture. <laughs> <laughs> 
Number 11, Utah. Uh, number 10, we got Kansas State. At number nine, we got Clemson. Number eight, Penn State. What is a Nittany Lion? I don't think anyone has explained that to me still. At number seven, we, we, we got the guys that can't hold the food down, but that's when it builds character. We got the Volunteers of Tennessee. <clears throat> um, at number six, and out of the playoff picture with the most overpaid coach ever in football history, I'll beat you we, got, oh. we got the Alabama whatever. Tide gets rolled all the time. Alabamas. That's what they are. I'm sorry. I don't Should like I save it? <laughs> <laughs> like the most overpaid. And here come Emac. Shout out, Coach Saban. <laughs> number five, Ohio State. Uh, number four through number one. I'm going to give that to T Bone Funk. You said number five through number one? Number four. Oh, so number four. Let's see. It looks like we got those uh, <clears throat> USC. Trojans had to make sure I got those letters right. We got TCU coming in at number three. All my friends from Detroit are going to be happy because their Michigan Wolverines are happy are number two and uh, number one. Georgia sitting at the top. Yeah, and then also in the NCAA uh, football, we just had rivalry week. That, that's that's a lot of R's to say and a lot of R's and R sounding letters. We had rivalry week. Uh, s- some of the notable losses, unfortunately, my damn ducks to the to the beavers. Ducks are supposed to beat beavers a- anyway. And then uh, the game that you know it's the game everyone looks forward to when it's time for that rivalry. It's Ohio State and Michigan because you know on that day they don't they don't say the the letter M. But uh, they had no choice but to watch that M get planted in the middle of the field as Michigan came out on top. Shout out, shout out to Coach Harbaugh. Beat them That's down in the second up. half, boy. A running game or something. All right. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry. this is the Man Cave, a production of the Platform Sports Talk Show. I am your host, Stanton, and I'm not by myself. I'm joined by my brothers. Oh, T-Bone. Craig Black. And our special guest. Eric McWoods. Yes, yes. We're going to transition to uh, one of the other sports that Eric played, being a triple threat athlete back in his day. We're going to transition to that basketball. It's basketball time, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to hop right into it. We're going to get into these NBA standings. We're not wasting no time. We're not wasting no time. We're going to start in the West. Mm, 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 mm. Craig, if you could run the West for us, starting with the, the five that are from the outside looking in. All right. We got number 15. We got those Houston Bottle Rockets. My man, shout out to my man, Big <laughs> Al. That's his team, man. They are terrible. They got a young squad down there in Houston, but. They just, they can't put it together. Uh, you got Popovich squad uh, coming in number 14, the San Antonio Spurs. Uh, not doing too well either this year. On uh, number 13, we have the old man LeBron James and uh, <laughs> and Russell Westbrook. You know, I'm going to stop. Russell Westbrook. Yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> I'm stop. stop. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. You know, Russ been, oh, Russ been balling. Oh, <laughs> Russ been balling. And I think he gets the blame for too much out there in La La Land. Give Russ a break, okay? But uh, they number 13, that's 7 and 12. You got OKC coming in number 12 at 8 and 13. I don't know. OKC has a star on their squad, their point guard. What is his name? Oh, I forgot it. I can't Shot, do uh, Shot. Gil- Gilgis Alexander? Uh, uh. Yes, he is a baller. That dude, I watched him cook my wizards the other night for like 41. And to hit the game winner. And uh, coming at number 11, got them Timberwolves at 10 and 11. Real quick, I, I wanna I wanna highlight San Antonio Spurs. More more importantly, Coach Pop. Now, these past couple years haven't haven't been good to Coach Pop off of off off the court. But then it's like transitioning to like it, it's it's showing on the court. Like it the the records aren't of pop standard, so I just I, do do you all think that it might be time for coach to hang it up? He ain't got the team he, he used to have. 
But but I mean, where his shit? But he did. I, what you saying, Stan? He used to make it happen with the he was the making, young guy. The picture, you know what I'm saying? He at least had a. He at least had uh, somebody. He had a Tim Duncan on the team. Like that was at least a core. You had Ginobili. You had uh, Kawhi Leonard. That's some Kawhi. It, it's not like oh look, we just don't have anybody on the team. You had guys like that during those times when they were at the top at different points. And I'm but, and I forgot all about what's this? Uh, can't even remember. Tony Parker. Like how Tony you Parker. Get Tony Parker. Couldn't think of his name. But no, Pop let they let a star go in the offseason. Uh their point guard. Yeah, I'll say Murray. They, they they let him go to Atlanta. Come on now. So what's I don't understand that move. I don't understand that move. Why did they let him? And he was one of those guys that he brung up. And he, and he let mm-hmm. that go. Go ahead and pay that man that money and build a core around him. I didn't understand that move. Why they let that young guy go? And now, and now you see that you know, it's it's not happening right now. I don't, I, I don't know. That's just my opinion. I, I'm not saying it's time for Pop to go. How long has he been there? About twenty some years now. I don't know how long has he been there, but nevertheless, it's oh, maybe it's time for a different formula. Maybe he needs, maybe he needs to go up to the up over up into the GM seat or something and let somebody else coach. I mean, something. would you say the same thing about? I, I, I wouldn't say that. Hmm? Mm-hmm. Say it again. Say the same thing about Mike Tomlin with the Steelers. Like, when was the last time that they had a winning season? I mean, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Mike Mike Tomlin has never had a losing season until this season. What are you talking about, sir? Yeah, <laughs> don't say that. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Mike gonna do one. This thing. Is Mike Tomlin's. This is Mike Tomlin's, this is Mike Tomlin's first losing season. <laughs> winning season, yeah, losing that, season. Not... Did they make playoffs over the past few years? You said win the season, sir. I'm just correcting you. I'm just correcting you. I'm just correcting you, sir. I'm correcting myself. My point is, is that <laughs> there, every every coach goes to a point where, look, this just ain't his time. Like the team is not built for him right now to do what he needs to do. And I don't necessarily put that on the coach. I, I'm just saying is that you know they have to rebuild that team and figure out how to do it. And I mean, I just don't think they may have had one piece, but if you realize that one piece isn't going to do it because I don't think they were doing pretty too well last year. Like that one piece isn't going to be what saves them. They need to build pieces as we talk about with the Cardinals all the time. You're correct. And I agree with you on that statement with pieces, but I think they let the one piece go that they could have developed other pieces around. I think they should have for, for what they let him, how they let him go. They didn't get enough in return for to build around. I don't know what he has in his, I don't know if they got a G league team or whatever, but I guess we'll see in the next couple of years. I don't I don't see Pop going anywhere. I think Pop's going to make the decision when he's going to be gone. They're not going to say Pop, you know, nobody's going to fire Popovich. So it's like he's going to have to step away. But I don't think he should go right now. I'm thinking that somebody else needs to be making some decisions on personnel. How about that? Emac, what are your thoughts? <sighs> I, I side with Pop because – what Pop has done with Spurs is crazy for me, just in terms of what he's done. He's, he, I mean, obviously the Spurs is a systematic team, so he has, and right now he don't have the system players to to adjust to what he's doing. So it's, I wouldn't say that's a testament on Pop. That's more a testament to just the personnel that he has. And what I said, he's like I said, he like it, like Black said, he's gonna decide when he when he's done. Like that's on him because he's got the pedigree, he's got the he's got the you know the narrative in the league of what he is. So for me, like I said, obviously the trade with Murray, that was a little, that was a little stupid sending him to the Hawks, the Hawks with Trey Young. Cause right now Murray hooping right now <laughs> going crazy. So yeah, it's one of those things. It's like, I guess, I guess maybe pop was thinking more of a rebuilding thing. Like he's trying to bring in players maybe to the draft or maybe get a trade season. But for me, pop ain't going nowhere. He, he chilling. <laughs> I'm looking at his starting five right now. Trey Jones, Devin Vassell, um, Kendon Johnson, Jeremy, uh, so so Chan and uh, I can't I can't Jacob Pocelli. I hope I said his name right, but uh, two of those guys in the starting five are out right now, and it's like he got his second team. Josh Richardson is out right now, so it's like Blake Wesley, his third team, he's out right now. So it's like uh, and to back him up, you got Doug McDermott, you got Romeo <laughs> Langford, you got Zach Enough Collins. Wrong, <laughs> it's like who who are these guys? I'm like who. It's like uh, he does it sometimes with no names, and he builds them up. But th- this cast, maybe it's maybe they need this rebuilding time. You're right. This like a talent. <laughs> I, I, maybe I, I can get it. 
in rebuilding time, but time is not on on, on the side. Like yeah. it's been twenty something years. At some point, you know, franchises get impatient. Yeah, like they, they do get impatient. Spurs are winning team too, so that is true. <laughs> All right, if we can pull those standards back up. We're going to get into the four that are, if the season were to end right now, they would be in the play-in tournament. Emac, go ahead and read those off for me, sir. At number 15, we got the Pistons. Oh, no, no. On, the, on the West. We on, the, on, the, on the West, the my fault, my fault. So uh, on the play-in? Yeah. All right, so the Warriors 11-11. It's a shocker. Number 10, we got the Mavs. Uh, number eight who was at the T Wolves right there. No, that's the that's the Utah Jazz. I oh, see Jazz right there. They ain't changed their emblem. Yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah, and then the number seven we got the uh, Trailblazers. Yeah, uh, Dame is supposed to be making his return tonight uh, mm-hmm. as they play the Lakers. Looking at the West playoffs right now, T Bone, can you run through those for us, good sir? Oh, I hope I can. We got the number six. We got the Sacramento Kings. Number five, we got those Los Angeles Clippers. Uh, looks like number four, those Memphis Grizzlies. That's that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Oh, uh, okay. Number three. Hmm. Looks like those uh, Pelicans. Pelicans hooping. I was about to say those New Orleans Pelicans. I almost said the Hornets. You know, Uh-oh. I know Uh-oh. it's not the Hornets, but you know, these things have flipped around over the past decade for me. You know. Who who's that at number two? Who is that at number two? Who who nuggets. who who is that? Nuggets. <laughs> Looks like. Tell me how that's a nugget. What what kind of nugget? No, it's I it's the, the mining. I see the, the mining and the mountains. What say it again? It's the mountain in the middle, or you know, the, the mountains the in mountain, Colorado. The mountain and then in the middle. Pick tools. Yeah, I that's see, what it is. I see the, the pick tools. I, I, right I, I the see the pickaxes. That right right in between at the top. Uh-huh. That, that's a mountain's peak. That's a mountain's peak. All right. Ten years from now, they're gonna have somebody's mouth with a gold tooth in, and that's gonna be the nugget. All right. Number one, we got those Phoenix Suns out there, fourteen and six, holding it down. But you know, I'm telling you, oh, yeah, the Warriors, they coming, they coming for them. They eleven and eleven right now, but that's that's only a few games back. Wow. All right. Shifting over to the East, the five teams on the outside looking in uh, at the bottom of the barrel, we got the Detroit Pistons. Coming in number 15. Number 14, we have the Orlando Magic sitting at 5 and 16. The Pistons are at 5 and 18. At number 13, we've got the Hornets sitting with 6 and 15. At number 12, it's just the beginning of the season. We got my Bulls. We're 9 and 11, but it's all right. We're going to turn it up, and we're going to get there. And at number 11, we got the Miami Heat. We're actually playing the Celtics right now. Um... <laughs> Craig, yep, go ahead, Craig. I'm gonna let you get the play-ins for the East. Uh, the play-ins right now. Uh, number ten, you got those New York Knickerbockers. Uh, they are terrible. So really got, uh, you, you, have to, you have to enunciate every every every, <laughs> every letter in that one. The Knickerbockers. <laughs> I did ten and eleven, <laughs> and then <laughs> where you was about to say, I was like, oh damn, you gonna have to take Craig off the show for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they call it. they're the knickerbockers <laughs> you also got coming in number nine you got one of the most dysfunctional teams in the nba the new jersey nets uh kevin durant is my man but that team is uh they're 11 and 11 the new jersey oh my bad the brooklyn nets i'm sorry the brooklyn nets. <laughs> my bad my bad they're 11 and 11 new jersey brooklyn same distance um also <laughs> coming in at number eight you got the AT Aliens, uh, Atlanta Hawks at 11 and 10. And then at number seven, you got my Washington Wizards that have just lost. So you can change their record to 11 11 because they lost to those Brooklyn Nets just now on, on TV. Man, I'm sitting here watching the game looking terrible, man. I don't know. While we are here, let let let's talk about this. Let, let's talk about this Brooklyn Nets team. Mm. Let let's. <laughs> where where do we want to start? Oh man, where do we want to start? I'm gonna start with. Uh, I'm gonna start with my binoculars, because I could have swore. I, I think I saw. I think I saw Ben Simmons, like like old Ben Simmons, not this new Ben Simmons that had averaged two points a game for the first ten games. I think I saw old Ben Simmons. He's been putting up some numbers. He's been contributing on the on the on the court. 
he's he's been he's been getting back to ways of old. Do you all do do we hope that this is the start of a turnaround of, for what we've seen these past or what we haven't seen these past couple of years? With all this praise you just gave Ben Simmons, he's hurt now. <laughs> he actually didn't play tonight because <laughs> he's hurt. <laughs> but um, I, you know, I, I, I'm really cheering for Ben Simmons too, man. I, I hope he does play like he has for the last couple of games. He comes back from this. Uh, I don't know what type of injury he has, but I don't know if they just wrestled him or what. But he didn't play tonight. I was thinking he was hurt. Um, I may be wrong. Maybe promote, promoting uh, fake news, but nevertheless. I, I do hope he does continue his his play. I, I hope he gets the confidence to step outside of the key and shoot a damn jumper, uh, like a 10-footer or something. It's like every time he comes close to that, he's been scoring, but they've been dunks and they've been layups and they've been, you know, fast break. You know, he hasn't – I haven't seen him shoot a jumper yet. And I think he needs to get that confidence back to just attract to attempt the shot, a shot. I'm like, what are you doing, man? You, you're a pro player. Shoot the ball, you know, but I don't know. He has That's a calf strain. He's out for three games. Oh, yeah, he's hurt. <laughs> so, so let's, let's move. Y'all, y'all know who I'm saving for last, right? Y'all already know. So we're going to move on <laughs> to um the return of, of the prodigal problem child of the NBA uh, in, in this – this way he chose to be a problem child wasn't really the best, but he's back now. We're talking about uh, Kyrie Irving. Kyrie made his return, uh, his much anticipated return. Um, mm. I- I'm just going to ask the question straight up. Do you believe that the requirements for his return, you know, I remember when we talked at first. <coughs> Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> My bad. You need you need a cough drop. You need a yeah yeah. My bad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <clears throat> yeah. Shit. Yeah. At, <laughs> at this point, after it is all said and done, can we say that the requirements were just to put it lightly a bit much? Oh shit. I think they much. were. I think they were uh, some straight BS. You know, it was um, demeaning. It was. Um, demasculating it was it, it they they were embarrassing and i, I just don't you know it, it that's that's who we are this is the world we live in so that's all i'm gonna say about that it's it's kind of it's kind of crazy that this documentary during this whole time is still for sale on amazon <laughs> it's crazy it's like what are we doing here what are we doing with we're, we're shaming, we're blaming this man for what he did. Okay, he paid the price. Okay, you suspended him, that's good. But then you're going to give him a laundry list of things to talk about? Come on now, that's just... I mean, that he has to do? I mean, I don't... That's I mean, just my Craig, opinion. You, 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 you making it seem like... You making it seem like he posted something and they were like, oh no, you can't come back. You're going to do all these things before you come back. There was a whole lot of stuff that happened in between. And, and and you know that's kind of on him. And with anybody, any type of athlete out there, uh, I'm just saying. I think that you know you know what you have to do as far as be. You're a media person at that point, and you know how you're supposed to conduct yourself in the media. The thing with him wasn't even about the the stuff that he posted. It was all right, man. Uh, yeah, here on our platform now, uh, we really don't want to be associated with this. They're asking you questions about this, and you're like doubling down on it. It's like, dude, like you, so, you represent the organization at that time, at that point. He, the man said he was not anti Semitic every time. He said he cannot be anti Semitic every time. Maybe he was wrong in saying that, but they wanted, uh, I am sorry and I apologize for what I did. They wanted that, they didn't get that. He paid his price. You got suspended. Craig, it okay. wasn't just that simple though, because but, they also but, asked him. They also asked him, "Hey, what parts didn't you agree with on this?" And he didn't want to. He didn't want to get into he that. Should, like, he should. When he made the post, he didn't write anything to it, so he shouldn't have to. But, but that's why. But that's why you have press conferences so that they, you can clarify and answer questions. You a public person out there, and if they ask, if you make a public thing like that, and you know that people are out there to talk about it. 
for, for, for not only what he thinks, but for the team, if people are saying, hey, what didn't you agree with? Like, come on, man. It's not that hard to say, like, well, you know, they mentioned some stuff about the Holocaust that I did not agree with. It's not hard well, to do that. He did, in a, in a sense, he did say that. He said, no, I not, cannot be no, anti-Semitic. You, no. know what it, you know what it was? They used this word, and being, being anti-Semitic, as we use, as we label somebody saying the N-word. You know, they, they use it as, in, 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 in his culture, in his background, in his education, his beliefs, he believes he cannot be this. That's so, not the point. No, but, but hold on. Let, let me let me let me let me let me just let me just finish. Let me just finish. Let me just finish. Maybe let's say he was wrong. Let's say he was wrong a hundred tenfold. You suspended him and took his money, but you're gonna give him a laundry list of things he has to do and say. I don't have I don't know if Smooth has that list, or we can pull up some of the stuff. We'll go right through and read some of that stuff off that list and tell me if this is not some modern day demasculation or some just trying to just break him down. You know, you have to break down the bull in front of everybody to make sure that, you know, you put him in check so everybody else will stay in check. That's exactly what it is. So run it down for me. Craig, they said the, the first thing on the list was apologize and condemn the film he promoted. Uh, okay. Is, keep is going. That okay. Problem, is that problematic? Saying, keep going. Keep going. Keep oh, going. no. It's more than one. Break it down one by one. Is that problematic to tell him to apologize and condemn the film he promoted? Again, he That's never one. said the stuff that he didn't agree with in the film. That's one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Make a five hundred thousand dollar donation to anti hate causes. No specific. Not even That's not even two. Spotless. That's two. You already suspended him. He already donated money to the Jewish community. I think and he gave, gave five hundred. And then they want. Then they want more money from him. That's no, true. They gave him the money back, Craig. That's why that's why the whole thing about the donation was there. They gave him the money back. Because why would you give it back? Why are we going back and forth with it? They okay. gave him well, they gave him the money back because this dude's giving money, but he wasn't even apologizing. It's like, well, here's here's the money. Like they they wanted to un know that he understood, which goes back to the next thing: complete sensitivity training. Will you tell me a job on in anywhere out here in corporate America or whatever? Where if somebody did something that was deemed insensitive, that they wouldn't get sensitivity training. You tell me what radio station, if you say something on the air that is wrong, whatever we're talking about, racism, sexism, whatever, you tell me what radio station would make you complete sensitivity training before coming back on the air, if you're going to come back on the air. That's the new one hundred four point nine here in St. Louis. I can tell you that because, yeah, <laughs> that's the, the new you one. Got, you got three so far. Keep going. I'll keep going. Complete anti-Semitism training because we're specifically talking about anti-Semitism. Like I don't think that that. And, and the man told you he was not anti-Semitic. But the reason why they're doing the training is because I don't think that he actually understands what that actually oh, means. So, uh, so you telling me do. Mm -hmm. You telling me he doesn't know what anti-Semitic is? Bro. See, that's the whole that's the whole thing. You see, that's that's when the argument gets kind of gray. It gets kind of colluded. Because if you talk to any Hebrew uh uh Israelite, they would tell you every black man is from Islam, is from that. It, it, you know what I'm saying? They're part of that, you know. So I I don't know the whole religion thing, but my, what I'm saying is he's the man said he's not anti-Semitic. So why does he need to go find out what anti-Semiticism is? Okay. Come on. Now. Well, let's, well that, okay. That's but let's, go back, that's but wait, let's go back to what we were talking about in the documentary. The one of the whole reasons, one, just I'm just giving one specific thing. One specific thing that people took issue with the documentary is that the documentary denied the Holocaust existed. So if they're doing that in the doc, huh? I'm sorry. I said Islam. I meant Israel. But go ahead. But what I'm saying, though, is in the documentary, one thing that people specifically took issue with is that you're denying that, that the people in the documentary denied the Holocaust. So you can mm -hmm. talk about it, it. You can say, OK, well, I believe that we're from this and all that stuff. That's that's one thing. But when you're clearly denying something in what we would call modern history happened to that specific group of people, whatever you want to talk about for as far as 
way back ancient times and all that type of stuff of where we come from. That's you can say that and, and, and think whatever. But the point is, is that what we're talking about in modern times did happen for sure. And in that documentary, they say it didn't happen. And no matter what you want to think, there's people who still have family members, just like I have family members, just like you have family members that went through the civil rights movement. If people were sitting up here saying, no, nah, that didn't happen. All that stuff that happened back then with the with the civil rights movement, that didn't happen. Like, you know, I, we'd have a problem with that. So if you have family members who went through that. Let me, let me ask this question. I, I haven't seen a documentary. Have you seen a documentary? I have not. Okay. All right. So, so you're speaking from what other people tell you. Doesn't speaking, matter. Doesn't speaking, matter. Hold, hold up. Hold up. Yes, it, it always does. But it always, it always does. You're speaking about what somebody t- always telling you. I'm telling you. I'm speaking from what I heard Kyrie actually say. You and I understand. I'm not saying that the documentary is not anti. Has its tropes in there about being, about being anti-Semitic. I'm not saying it doesn't. It it does. It probably does. I haven't seen it. But my whole point is, you're blaming all this on Kyrie for a retweet. That he tweeted and he came Again, out saying I'm not, I, I'm not anti-Semitic. And then you don't see anything about the platform that's selling this documentary, making probably they probably made at least a hundred mil by now off this documentary because right. of all this going on right now. You don't Craig. mention that one time about where it's being sold at. Craig. I mean, it's kind of crazy to me, man. You Craig. You, I'm sorry, the, go right the, ahead. The NBA doesn't employ Amazon, the NBA does not. The, the Amazon does not report to the NBA. Kyrie does. What does I got to do with being having some racial epitaphs? What does I got to do with being racially motivated? What does I got to do with saying, being wrong? You're saying that nobody's so, talking about so Amazon. Amazon so, ain't got nothing to do with what with Kyrie. So, ever so it's okay. So what you're saying is what you're saying is what every media outlet is saying is it's okay to go and sell some racist material but as long as my employee is not i'm cool with it who who controls what amazon does craig come on, come on now man who controls it, what amazon come on now the, the nba is in, probably working out deals right now amazon they take a lot of money from amazon what are you talking about man amazon does a lot of advertising with the nba come on now it's just like you it's a it's a twofold they rather put all this pressure on a small man to go after the big dog it's BS, man. It's, it's it's straight up. It's it's the ultimate. Well, you, well, you got the six. That's six things you had to do. How many more things are your list? Uh, meet with ADL and Jewish leaders, and then meet with the owner. <laughs> so seven. Just like if you in your job, if something eight. went down, you'd have to meet. He with has to do eight. He has to do eight things. I, I would. I. I if you work, if you worked at a radio station, and some stuff went down again, you can reference Jamel Hill when when stuff went down for her. She had to meet with the bosses, John Skipper at the time. You could any any other industry, any if when I, when I worked at a call center, if some stuff went down, I still had to meet with my directors or whoever. That's not okay. uncommon. I don't I don't understand why that's all of a sudden seen as a problem. Like oh, it's okay. at well, the list. Well, like, well maybe that maybe that number eight should have been at the top of the list, and we ended right there. Why do we have to do all these other things? Why do we have a because laundry list of things? When, when 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 he apologized and you go back and man, it's like I don't know. You see it one way, I see it totally different, and I can't I can't grasp it and I can't get with it, man. It's like they they really tried to they they really did break down this dude from a financial standpoint, from 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 being just being a straight up black man standpoint, they just really try to break them down. It's like when you're black, you pay the ultimate price for something, but it's okay if you're any other race, you can skirt Bro, right down with that BS. They kicked Donald Sterling out the whole NBA. Yeah, he made a profit off of selling his team. That's out of their control, but they can't control him <laughs> not making money off his team. But he ain't in the NBA anymore. They got him out hey, of it. Hey man, it's it this this game that they play. Is bigger than me and you. And your point of view is yours. My point of view is mine. And I'm going to tell you 100% that this man got raped. He got raped by the man and the system. So it is what it is. I mean, the man said it 100 times that he's not anti-Semitic. And they didn't want to take that. So to get back on the playing field, he had to bow down to the quote-unquote 
man. I ain't gonna call him what I want to say, but he did what he had to do. So it is so what it if is. You had people working for you. If you had people working for you, yeah, that that said some stuff that messed with your potential sponsors for different events or whatever, you would just be like, eh, no big deal. No, they suspended him. I wouldn't make I wouldn't write up a whole laundry list of things for him he have to do to get back. They suspended the man. They did the right thing. They should have now. That's the NBA's fault. Maybe they suspended them from the from the very beginning. The NBA made the fight. That was Adam Sil Phil Silver that messed up in the beginning. That wasn't on Kyrie. Maybe when this first came out, he was supposed to take the action, suspend him, and get it done with. He waited, he let this thing linger on for all oh, go on and on. Maybe Adam Silver didn't even really understand what was going on. It's again, like it was a again, retweet. The suspension I'm not, I'm not, about the tweet. Just spins because he didn't bow down and apologize the way they wanted to hear him apologize. Bro, you can't look at everything as a bow down situation. Like that was that was straight up. That was a straight. No, that was a straight up. Somebody asked. If somebody asked you a bow down. If somebody asked you a straight question about anything else, you wouldn't say you bowing down. That was that was a straight up bow down. They put so much pressure on Kyrie. They put so they kept asking him this question over and over and over again. They they drummed they drummed this thing up as big as they could to bring him down. I'm not saying that he wasn't wrong. Was it to make he was wrong? He was okay. I just said he wasn't wrong. He was wrong. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait wait a minute. Because y'all know we're getting close to our bedtime. Right. Oh, my bad. My bad. I'm, I'm just sorry. gonna ask real quick. Just, <laughs> just, um, just, just a simple yes or no. Craig, was it too much? Yes or no? Hell yeah, it was too much. T Bone, was it too much? Yes or no? No. Emac. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yes two no? times. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> All right, I, I crazy answered. what they did to that man. That, no, nah, you answer it. No, nah, Stan, was it too much, Stan? My lawyers have advised me not to speak. Oh, ma, come on, Stan. Come on, man. Come on, Stan. I mean, it was okay. Um, mm. Mm. yeah, at one point it got to be too much. Like, mm -hmm. you know, T T Bone, you had a you had a valid point. Yes, Don Sterling is out of the NBA. But but he 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 walked out breaking even. It's they can't pain. help that though. Somebody wanted the team. They, he owned the team. There's no other way to get him out. <sighs> There's a legal way to do everything. Real quick, um, before we before we fully get out of here, I want to finish those NBA standards because we did not finish the East. It, it got it got real good, real fast. Like uh, <laughs> the the six that'll be in the playoffs if the if the season ended today at number six, we've got the Toronto Raptors. Raptors at number five, we've got the 76ers of Philadelphia. And number four, we got the Indiana Pacers. Number three, finding a way to do it finally without LeBron. We've got the Cleveland Cavaliers. At number two, we got the Milwaukee Bucks. And at number one, we have the Boston Celtics. Shout out to that hometown hero. Jason Tatum, and also shout out to his dad. We had him on the show a while back. <laughs> Real quick, um, before we get out of here, Emac, we we want to give you an opportunity to uh give your personal thank yous to to everyone that's watching, uh your personal shout outs and any final words that you have. Uh no, first and foremost, appreciate y'all for having me. It's been a great time, you know, be able to talk sports, be able to talk a little bit about soccer or football. So I had a great time, and uh, like I said, uh, you know, shout out to the fam. <laughs> Uh, shout out to my uncle for popping up on here today. It was always good to see him. And, uh, you know, also, most importantly, shout out to Guy, so, because he's always good. So, yeah. So. All the time. All right. All right. That's it. That's it? That's got the, no, that's not it. I lied. I lied. I lied. Um, being a hometown, <laughs> a hometown guy, I want you to talk about the importance of us now having an MLS soccer team. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's super important, uh, finally, because like I said it earlier, St. Louis is historically a soccer city. You can say Missouri as a whole, because Kansas City has a team, but yeah. we all know St. Louis better than Kansas City. So Always. <laughs> so I think it's from a standpoint of just having it uh, in St. Louis is going to bring more attention, you know, because, I mean, it's kind of almost like we have a major sports team now, you know. Obviously, soccer isn't one of the biggest sports in the U.S., but we have a team now, so that's going to draw more crowds, and that's going to put a lot more interest to, you know, the kids in the inner city and to also – you know, around the area. So I think it's most importantly, that's the biggest thing. And, uh, you know, I'm really happy and I hope that it can, it can spark a change in the city and for years to come, we can get more players of color and also just bring more attention to St. Louis soccer. So, for sure. 
I remember when I was growing up, it wasn't the Jewish league. It was my elementary school. We had a soccer team. I played it for a good season, a good yeah. one season. <laughs> it, it was a lot of running. Like, yeah. Being a, you know, you naturally full of energy, but you don't expect to exert all that energy at one time. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. I got this stored up for the day. I'm mm-hmm. going home taking naps after a soccer game because I'm tired. I'm exhausted. Mm. I'm beat. Mm. Kind of like, you know, when you're an adult and you go to work all day and then you come and record a top podcast, you know, <laughs> and, then, and then you got to go home. It's exactly what we're about to do. Mm-hmm. Y'all, I want to thank y'all. Mm-mm. Are we still at? We still at? Yeah, we we talking yeah. about that super show coming out, Man Cave, December okay. seventh, December twenty out twenty eighth. Check uh-huh. us out. Uh, apparently, can't hear nobody else. So uh huh. Show's over. Big <laughs> <laughs> Black, myself, T Bone Funk, also Sadal. <laughs> we'll see y'all next week for uh, the Super Show. Check us out, December seventh. All right. <laughs> 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 and we out of here. We out. Yes, sir, yes, man Every last Wednesday. We the top E-Mac. show, bunny. Great to meet you, E-Mac. Oh, great to meet you. Great, we great show, today. bunny. Appreciate that. Do your, do your thing, man. Good show, fellas. Yeah, good show. <laughs> we the top show, bunny. <laughs> <laughs>